Succeed. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to the pre-show for week. Man, what are we on now? Like a hundred, two hundred, something like that. Uh, welcome week to week number week thirty-two pre-show. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing well. I'm I'm hopping on the desk for the pre-show today. Stepping stepping out of my normal comfort zone here. Joining me, of course, is Shay. She's never gonna leave the pre-show. She loves you guys too much here on the pre-show. Shay, how you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Had a, you know, a little bit of allergy sickness hit me over the past couple of days on the up and up though. So should be good to go for today. Hope the rest of you guys at home are doing well as well. And I think we're going to be getting into the power rankings here pretty soon. First off, and just kind of running, uh, running through that for a little bit. And seeing what, uh, seeing what we got in store here for you guys in slips. Okay, let's pull up the power rankings of last week. Are we going to start with last week's power rankings? Yeah, so last week, uh, last week's power rankings should be this. These are this this week's power rankings. Okay. So we've got bad players coming in at number one. Sixty-five points awarded to the bad players. 
58 to Inferno. Of course, the top two teams that went to the finals last series or last uh, last Sunday. M22 original moving up a couple of spots here, three spots to take the number three spot. Salt and Pepper, a, an older team for slips, but a newcomer recently slotting themselves into number four. Ethnic Babes taking the number five spot. And then we've got Yahan, the dudes due to inactivity, getting a lot less votes, both being on uh, in the top 10 still, but under the top five. Blue, of course, the Northern Shield reskin here. Uh, it's going to be slotting into number seven. N7 Phantoms, even with their slump, as well as the Doggers, both holding on to top 10 spots. N7 Phantoms getting number eight, and the Doggers taking number 10 right now. So uh, that is going to be this week's power rankings. Uh, it took a little bit of time to decide these this week. Had a little bit of inner turmoil within the committee trying to figure out exactly how we wanted to uh, figure out who who was sitting where. But, you know, what do you think about these power rankings, Shay? Uh, yeah, I think they're pretty accurate. I haven't really been voting on that power rankings. Do you think you could explain how the power rankings work and how they're ranked by? Yeah, so we actually just got a brand new feature for the power rankings <clears throat> that allows us as committee members to vote and uh, get everything consolidated into one website. But unfortunately, we really just weren't able to decide very well on yeah hun the dude uh you know some people wanted to let them drop due to their inactivity some people wanted to keep them up as they hadn't been inactive for too long and then of course uh shady shoals the imperium reskin not making it onto the power rankings but if you're not uh if you guys looking from home are not a fan of what these power rankings look like there's actually a way for you guys to have some input now We've got some community power rankings, and it's a brand new feature that's been added to Lola very recently. And I think we have an example ready to go for you guys of how it works. What do you think of Northern Shield's new name, Blue? <laughs> With the question mark yeah i don't i don't really know where that came from uh not the biggest fan of it i guess uh Same. northern shield sounded a little more like a team name i guess but you know their name is their name and if that's what they want it to be <laughs> no no problem i guess but exactly. we do have <laughs> discord up on the uh on the screen now so we've got the new feature being shown in the or from behind the scenes from our our man gj so you will put exclamation point vote power rankings in after the tournaments and you'll be able to vote on the teams that you think are the best teams in slips after each tournament once you put in vote power rankings lola is going to send you a dm with a link you'll click that dm and it'll lead you to the slips website where you'll be able to <clears throat> pick your teams in order from a drop down list as shown here on the screen if you want and uh you can type in the search bar as well and search for them so that you don't have to worry about trying to submit everything through lola as a bot or anything like that that Let's is so with... cool yeah, if you want to you are you gonna are you gonna start <laughs> voting on power rankings now i think i will Put it down in chat if you're going to start uh, helping with power rankings, too. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have separate power rankings from the committee. We're going to have committee power rankings and community power rankings. So if you do disagree with the committee's power rankings, now is your chance to show us uh, what you guys think back at. Uh... <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. I'm sorry. But this is your chance to show us what you guys think. And then there is a way to view the power rankings and see what effect you had on them. If you do exclamation point view power rankings, this consolidates everybody's votes for power rankings. And uh, this week we did have a couple people test it. Uh, I do believe that it ends up actually being the same uh, now that I think about it. I think only committee members did use the, uh, did use the feature. And if you do want to see exactly what the committee members are thinking, you can type in view power rankings and then the weekly series number that we are on. It would be 32 this this week, GJ. We do them for the uh, upcoming week, not the previous week. Yep. 
And if you do that, then you'll see, or it's a uh, committee only afterwards with an underscore. Good to know. I'm going to test that out later. <laughs> yeah, but I think there's a couple other new features that we got as there well, right? There is. So another thing that we have is that teams can now have fans from in board. So if you want to support a team from inside the Discord, you can just do a command that's support team and then the team name, and then it will show up on both of your, both the team's profile and your profile that you're supporting them. And teams that have 25 or more fans actually will get a new advanced team profile. Wow, that actually sounds pretty cool. What do these advanced profiles look like? Are they worth it? Uh, yeah, they're a lot more um, clean and nice looking, and it will just make the team look a lot more professional and uh, VIP in the server, you know? Oh, man, <laughs> we all know how much Shay likes to be a VIP in the server. <laughs> Slips owner herself. Oh, yeah. Just so, got my own advanced <laughs> profile. <laughs> <laughs> so in order to support a team, you would do exclamation point support team and then add the name of the team afterwards and as you can see here the gj alt 90 i wonder who that is wink wink nudge nudge is now a fan of uh, one of our powerhouses here in slips bad players and the support team does not have to be used on a team that's playing well that can just be a team that you're a fan of uh, as far as i know there is no limit of how many teams you can be a fan of um but that could be introduced later obviously to avoid people just being a fan of everybody because that then it just becomes very generic and not a lot of fun mm -hmm. but we hate to overwhelm you guys but there's even more coming up now and isn't this so exciting <laughs> so next up we actually have clip casting so you can both register to be a caster for people's clips or you can pay people in slips credits to cast your uh Rocket League clips that you post in the server. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, yeah. How does it how does it work? So you can just do the command exclamation point cast my clip and then do the ID of a caster that you can find by doing a different command that is I think it's uh hold up. Ah. It's just, you can see all of the casters by just doing exclamation point view casters. And then you can put in the ID and see what they require for them to be able to cast your clips. It'll be really funny too, like depending on um, who you decide to pick. And so it'll be like a nice little community thing. That does sound pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually just registering as a caster myself. So uh, I know mm -hmm. you guys didn't see me on that list, but I I believe I've just finished uh finished my registration. So now if you guys do want me to cast some of your clips, you are good to go. Yeah, you can also you'll be able to see um, links to the clips that they have casted, so you can get a preview of what you'll be getting yourself into. So yeah. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Those are coming out of nowhere now. <laughs> Feeling okay, Croc? <laughs> I, you know, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm on the up and up. Not 100% there yet, but, uh, but we're, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's not too bad. But anyways, guys, that's uh, just a recap on those new features. We've got community power rankings, support a team, and cast my clips. Uh, for cast my clips, we the casters will be charging slips credits. So make sure you guys are finalizing your teams for the tournaments, playing in as many as you can and getting those credits. So that way you can submit your clips to be casted by me, Shay, or any of the other casters that may register in or uh, to cast your clips. Uh, and also make sure to support your favorite teams that are going on. Uh, you know, I'm, I know we got a lot of reboot fans out there, a lot of bad player, a lot of Inferno fans. So make sure you guys do get into the bot playground or the bot command channel rather and Throw those, uh, throw those commands around and support your favorite teams and all of that fun stuff. But we are getting close to the main tournament, so let's go ahead and take a look at the bracket 
the early parts of the bracket for this week. We do have all the qualifiers finished, I believe, and we are ready to move into the round of 16 as soon as we hit 6 o'clock here. Shay, what, how do you like this bracket shaping up to look like a pretty good one so far? We have a lot of good teams signed up for this week. Um, I'm very worried about making predictions because every time I make a prediction, they never really <laughs> make it that far. And then I feel like I jinx it, you know, caster's curse. Uh, <laughs> that, I don't know. Me and Wallaby feel that one pretty, pretty roughly. As We're I've seen. Bad with, <laughs> with the caster's curse. But as yeah. you guys can see, we've got the return of Yeah Uh Huh at the top of our bracket. Going to be good to see uh, see them back in the bracket. Bad players going to have to fight them, likely in the semis, as I'm not really seeing too much competition for those two teams to get to the semis on the top side of the bracket. Going to be interesting to see who makes it to the finals. Then we've got M22 Original, Hold My Rice, Team Kinetic, Blue, Tribe, who took uh bad players to a two to one overtime game three series last week uh and inferno on the bottom side of the bracket so it's gonna be a pretty pretty fun bottom side of the bracket i think that our closest games here for the round of 16 are probably gonna be rapture and m22 alpha just based off of rapture's mmr and on the bottom side of the bracket probably m22 original and hold my rice uh as long as tribe was not like a one-off last week you know and they actually hold up to the hype of being able to take bad players to game three and you know maybe the bad players weren't just trolling or something like that but i'm pretty excited can you at least tell me who you think is gonna make it to the finals on both sides i think that bad players might actually be able to do it. um and also yeah, uh huh, has some potential as seen from other, uh, from other tournaments. Yeah, they like definitely do have potential. Uh, my my guess is gonna have to be yeah, uh huh versus Inferno here for a final. Inferno taking the bottom side of the bracket, probably gonna knock out all of their competition fairly easily. I think their biggest competition could be m22 original or hold my rice uh depending on who moves through that part of the bracket in the semifinals, and then i think they'll move on to the finals yeah uh -huh, of course and bad players pretty easy path to the semis as well one of those two teams probably moving on to the finals but let's take a uh <coughs> oh excuse me let's take I a actually look. we have some news for, to, to get people hyped up for next tournament also. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this is actually very exciting. So everyone, listen up. Should do a little uh, drum roll? <laughs> okay, so the prize pool for next week's tournament is actually going to be $80. Massive tournament next <laughs> week, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh, $80. Ah, ah. <laughs> 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 But she is not lying to you guys, folks. $80 prize pool coming up for our tournament very, very, very soon, a.k.a. next week. So make sure you guys are getting your teams together, recruit those SSLs, get them on your teams, and try to get your team $80 a week from now until the foreseeable future. So it's going to be really exciting. Uh, make sure you guys get your training in because it's definitely going to improve the quality of the teams that are getting pulled into slips every week. And I'm excited. Me too. I can't wait. <laughs> so we are going to be moving into the tournament with our first stream match at 6 o'clock. We're going to be watching the N7 Dragons, or the N7 Dragon, <laughs> the N7 Phantoms versus the Dragons here. The Dragons, a team that has actually piqued the interest of the Power Rankings Committee. Uh, not not a team that we've been ready to say deserves a spot, but they get a they get a you know number ten vote from time to time. N Seven Phantoms, of course, have stopped declining in their skill recently, but still haven't really rebounded and come up to be one of our true powerhouse teams in slips. 
usually still in the top 10. Unfortunately, I do have to say that they normally do remain in the top 10 due to teams dropping out here and there for inactivity. Would like to see them bring it back and perform really well this week. Che, who do you think is going to win this match? Um, I think the N7 Phantoms are going to win. You think I also would have to agree with you that the N7 Phantoms should win. Dragon's not quite a strong enough team, I think, to beat the N7 Phantoms. I do think they take it in two. Uh, but I do think that they have a chance to show themselves uh, and show them show out well here in the round of 16 would be a very unfortunate way to get eliminated in the round of 16 but i think this will probably be their closest match of the day as the rest of the bracket up on the top side looks very dangerous even the uh, other two teams that are closely matched m22 alpha and nyx are not weak teams according to their mmrs or at least according to nyx's mmr we've seen alpha play i believe once or twice they're not a they're not a very strong team, not nearly as strong as the original team, but they're definitely not a team to be ignored either. <clears throat> and then after that, we'll be moving into a quarterfinals match. Uh, I believe we're going to be looking at the bottom quarterfinal, uh, or the uh, actually I'm not yes the fourth quarterfinal. So it'll be. The winner of XVB and Tribe versus Power Gaming and Inferno. Uh, could be an interesting matchup here. Inferno should have that game pretty easily. Again, unless Tribe is just some secret powerhouse with their MMR. But what do you think, what do you think is uh, going to be the matchup that we see in that game, Shay? Which match? Sorry. <laughs> the uh, bottom quarterfinal out of XVB, Tribe, Power Gaming, and Inferno. Hmm, I don't know. I think Power Gaming should be able to make it through a few good matches. I'm kind of rooting for them to be kind of the underdog, which also the captain of Power Gaming we're going to see very, very soon in a 1v1. So depending on how he handles that one, we'll be able to see maybe how the team will pull through. Yeah, that would be pretty, pretty good to see. Uh, I actually... You know, while we're waiting here, I want to see who's on this XVB because I do believe that this was the original XV official B team, um, and they do and they do have some pretty solid players on their team. Uh, their MMRs don't really make too much sense to me right now, as one player has a fifteen oh three but is listed as a champ two, and another player has a fourteen forty eight but listed as a champ three, so. The uh, numbers mm -hmm. don't really make sense here, but assuming their MMRs are more correct than their ranks, we've got two, maybe three low grand champs and a uh, last season diamond three, this season champ one. So it'll be interesting to see how they hold up against Tribe, this new team that I believe is here due to Wallaby and I think is a collegiate team as well. Um, they haven't quite gotten a chance to show themselves on stream yet, but we're going to have Jacob, Matt, and Matthew Vilcarocha there, uh, all in the champ three, champ two range. So that'll be a really close, even match. Power Gaming, of course, with that 849 MMR, probably not going to really have a chance to stand up to Inferno. Oh, that's right. The MMRs are very telling. When do you think we should uh, hop right into our 1v1 match? Or when do you think we should get started on that? We can uh, get started on the 1v1 match as soon as we are good to go. Are you good to go for the 1v1 match? Um, we should be. Yeah, then if so, then let's go ahead and get these, uh, get these players in here and go ahead and get started. Great. We're going to go ahead and get the lobby going here pretty soon. Uh, Shay, break down this 1v1. What are what are we expecting here? Okay, so this is against Jake and Pizza Rolls. And so Jake is the captain of Shrex, which who isn't playing in the tournament today, sadly. But um, he has 896 MMR and his Diamond 1. And Pizza Rolls is the captain of Power Gaming, which clearly is playing in the tournament this week. 
and he is 906 MMR and is diamond 2. Okay, so that should be pretty interesting. I've played against both of those people, uh, and I would definitely caution anyone in chat that just heard those MMRs but hasn't seen them play to uh, wait until you see the gameplay. I have played both of these players in a 1v1. I think I've beaten Pizza in a series before, but we're pretty pretty close in skill uh, since the last time I played, but I also haven't played ones in forever, so he's probably surpassed me uh, tenfold by now. But Jake, very, very odd one style. He almost plays like two completely different games during the series. Very hard to read. Uh, makes it for a very interesting game and definitely a lot better at ones than his MMR would suggest. Yeah, both of their MMRs are very close, so I think that it'll be a very um, even match. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Uh, I hope these players are ready uh, because, well, let's see. Are, do we know if we're going to be lobby switching for these two players? Because Jake is EU and Pete's Rolls is US East. Normally, you know, you do uh, a little bit of a coin flip. One person's home, one's away. First two games played on the home team server. Second two games played on the away team server. And then, of course, the last game, if necessary, would be played on the home team server based on the coin flip. But I do not know if that was planned or not here, here for today. So we'll see. Uh, I believe we're on US East server right now. No, we're on an EU server right now. So it looks like uh, Jake will start with the advantage, at least server-wise. And we're going to be keeping an eye, an eye on the pings of these players, too, to see exactly how the servers can affect them. Is there anyone in particular you're rooting for, Croc? No, I'm not rooting for anyone, uh, especially since, uh, you know... A, I don't like to root for somebody uh, as I'm casting, but B, also, like, I could very much be one of the people playing these guys later down the road in a 1v1. Uh, you know, I don't want them to hold a grudge against me just because I said one <laughs> of them should win over the other. That's fair. Yeah. Mystic, is it going to be all EU servers? That sounds really rough. That sounds like a rough pull for pizza rolls. Because if I was a betting man, which I am, I would put my money on Jake. I think Jake's going to take this series, especially now that it's on EU. I would put my money on Jake. Yeah, that would make sense, because of ping, of course. Yeah, I think he, he has... Uh, I'm pretty sure he's taking games off of pizza rolls, though, in the U.S. servers. It could be wrong. Oh. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure he has. They did three coin toss flips, and Jake won all three of them? Jeez. Oh, wow. That's, That's sad. a matter of luck, pizza, all right? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like if Jake doesn't win today, then... Something must be wrong. Yeah, it's definitely going to be very interesting here for Pizza Rolls now, playing away on the uh, disadvantage here for the server, and then also uh, the underdog in this match, according to my observations, right? The MMR says that Jake is actually the underdog, but we will uh, we'll see here pretty shortly. Just waiting for Jake to join the match. <laughs> Jake is the current 1v1 matchup holder, champion matchup. He's the 1v1 champion. He is and the 1v1 right champion now? right now for the mid-ranked division. Oh, oui. So this is a title match. This is not just some, uh, you know, random 1v1. Pizza Rolls, I think, is maybe on his seventh attempt now at challenging uh, Jake for the 1v1 title. Hasn't been able to convert yet, but maybe today will be his lucky day. Except for the coin flips, you know? <laughs> 
Mystic is also the champion. He's the champion of our mid rank Division Two title. But you know, now soon enough, he's gonna get too good. He's gonna have to vacate the title and start a uh, start a uh, vying for the Division One title. Hey, the amount of attempts doesn't make you good or bad. All right, these rules we're we understand. You know, Jake is Which just is uh, Jake's. Odd ones player, at least to me. Uh, again, like I said, plays. I, I, when I played him last, about four or five months ago, it literally felt like I was playing two different people throughout the series. Very interesting ones player. So we're going to see exactly how that works here as we do get onto the field. It Take looks like our players. Are... <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Jake lined up on blue. Big Al is Pete's rolls, of course, lining up on orange, and they are off. Early advantage looking like here for our boy Pizza Rolls. Oh, the whiff on the save could have been <gasps> rough there, but not going to be able to go in. <clears throat> the ping also not too bad for Pizza Rolls either. Just uh, around that low hundred mark. And a beautiful flick to open up the scoring out of the corner. Does a good job here to get the ball on his car. Nice little side flick. Beats Jake on the near post. Early kickoff by Jake. Think he's going to be able to score again right here. Yeah, no. <laughs> Mind. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Good save by Jake on the flick and the counter attacks a free goal there. 1-1 one, one here. I honestly expected a little bit more back and forth from these two players so far, but it's been two attacks straight off the kickoff from Pizza Rolls and then one counter attack here from Jake. Very patient defensive player right now. Yeah, they're this definitely both trying to... Yeah. Oh, the own goal! Oh, no! Oh. So sad. <laughs> Boop! <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly are they both trying to do? I'm sorry. Mystic is telling me to shut up because I'm going to do a caster curse on pizza. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 nah. You're fine. What caster if we just curse? did it evenly? <laughs> yeah, right. They There's both no uh... caster curse. Never heard of such a thing. Oh. What? <laughs> Could this be another goal? Another early goal for Pete's? Oh, wow. Here. So this uh, matchup is out of three? Yes, Here? I do believe... This is a best of three. Ah. So, you think Pizza Rolls is going to be able to win the first one? It's possible, but it is ones. Anything can happen. As you can see here, a kickoff goal off the demo. Going to only be a one goal differential now. And still plenty of time left to play. Three minutes, 45 seconds. Plenty of time for plenty of goals. Mystic oh, yeah. does seem to think Pizza will win, though. Strong supporter. <laughs> Mystic, go into the Discord and uh, become a team fan. <laughs> yeah. Support team, Pizza Rolls. Oh, yes. He's going to make his very own Pizza Rolls team. Just him. <laughs> I think only you're good enough to do that, Shay. Oh, you think? No one else would be able to survive the 3v3 tournament on a team all by themselves. 3v1. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Oh, good shot. Good attempt on the Look save there. Fortunately, not enough. So we have a poll going right now in the chat about who will get, win game one. And most people seem to think that Pizza Rolls will be able to take the dub. As of now. It's possible here. I still have my money on Jake, though. And yeah, Mystic, normally title matches are best of five, but unfortunately, it is already 536. 
which means we only have 24 minutes until main tournament time. And if the series were to go to game five, I don't think we'd have time to play it out. Uh, so may, we might just be able to only watch a certain amount on stream. They may have to finish the rest of the matches off stream or something. Uh, depends on what what the boss wants to do. If we're going to go ahead and just run the tournament or the, run the 1v1 until it's done or if we're going to just switch to the tournament right at six. But these ones games do take a long time as there are a lot of goals scored. An average of 11 to 12 minutes a game, I'd estimate. Uh, I caramba. So we need an we need an Icarumba emote in the Discord server now. <laughs> Shay, sh it's just Shay face palming. That's all it is, basically. <laughs> that sounds great. I love that. Oh, Jake says, "Can't believe people think I'm a lose." <laughs> it is a pretty close game so far, and they are on the EU servers. Very interesting. Yep. Oh no. Whiff on the open net. But it is definitely possible if they do play some games on the US servers. I don't think this series is taking place completely on EU. Ooh. Another score? Possibly here. Not gonna be enough though. Pizza does bring it in again with a rough touch. That one had to be due to ping he as he flips right by the ball. The ball is only a foot in front of his face. He shouldn't have missed that one. Oh, he misses. Yeah, had a good chance there, but unfortunately just not quick enough to get the ball on his car before Jake came in with the bump. Oh, what a save there. Good flick up onto the crossbar to save that one. Not really sure where Pizza Rolls was going there, but it ends up working out as Jake just kind of flips it across the goal box. Pizza Rolls does have plenty of boost here. Maybe another flick. Shot goes wide. Jake bringing it in, pops it up, not going to be enough to get it by Pizza, but he does get back on defense. Pizza going to be looking for a 50 here. No, he just tries to flip the ball on net. That little split second he needs to make the contact to go from good to great on the ball, I think is really being affected by the ping here. Able to still make saves and still touch the ball and control it where he wants. Oh, and a good shot there oh. finds the crossbar and goes straight down into the net. Let's go, oh, pizza. <laughs> Evening the score. 21 seconds left. <clears throat> pizza takes kickoff in his favor. Will he be able to score one more before it goes to, into overtime? Don't Let's find him, out. Okay. Don't curse him. <laughs> Keep casting, but don't curse him. Oh. I can't help oh. it. <laughs> uh oh, this is dangerous now for pizza rolls. Bounces out dangerously. At least it's got some good speed, so it's actually going back towards Jake's half. Oh, good bump there as well. Pizza seems like he's trying to regain control of the ball, and Jake is just kind of swerving out of his path. Yeah, it's a pretty solid tactic here, too. I think Jake's just waiting for an opportunity to do that. Demos Jake, gets the free open net, takes home the win <laughs> of the first game. What a guy. Does go into OT here on the EU server, but that is going to be game one down in Jake's favor. believe the second game will at least definitely be played on EU. Maybe for the third game, we're moving to e U.S. East, but I'm not sure what these players decided on.
Good play here from both of the players. Uh, more shots for pizza rolls, just not as high quality, I guess, as Jake's shots. Of course, pizza rolls did have that really nice flick in the top right corner and the nice flick to open the game. But Jake, with a little bit of patience, converts more of his goals, able to take game one. And I do believe they're ready to move into game two here. And as we move into game two, we wanted to remind you guys, in case you missed the announcement in the Discord, we have brand new Twitch emotes that are uh, going to be on display here right now. So uh, there is one tier one emote. We've got our, we got ourselves a Brazil emote here. And then if you happen to be a tier two subscriber, you get a nice Croc Pog emote. Yes, you heard me correctly. Croc Pog. Want a chance to paste my face all over the areas of twitch that you love and enjoy to watch streams on subscribe at our tier two subscriber price and you will be able to do just that that would be very crock pog of you ha <laughs> see what i did there because that's the emote ha <laughs> i know i'm hilarious guys wow tough crowd okay i'm using the emote yeah, let's go with chat filled with <laughs> brazil flags <laughs> Jake opening up, scoring early here. Very good. Uh, just a little bit of a correction. I don't believe that the uh, the Brazil flag is free to everybody, right? Just Oh, it is, because Mystic's not well, in the like, How, I that's think interesting. I, mean, I unlocked it by using the viewing points. Oh, okay, okay. I can unlock it for 24 hours. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so you do have to be a subscriber to use the emote, or you have to unlock it using channel points. Either way, though. Yeah. That first goal was pretty impressive. It was player. within the first, what, four seconds? Yeah, and then we got a second one here, both within 24 seconds. Jake is retaking, uh, retaking control. He is definitely taking control of this match. Peace Rolls needs to get an early one here. Delayed kickoff, not going to go in his favor, though. Bounces into his own end, circles around, touches it away, tries to get some boost here. Yeah, he doesn't even want to give Pizza Rolls a, a chance or a thought to think that he yeah. might have a chance. <laughs> Jake is going to take the open neck goal here, though. Puts it in to cut the lead in half. Right now. Two to one. Ooh, pizza kicks off first. But Jake quickly takes control of the ball again. Yeah, and another goal there evens up the game. Just uh not even twenty seconds ago the game was two to zero and now it's tied. Ooh, Jake takes the ball first. Is this going to be a quick goal? No, Pizza saves it. <laughs> yeah, good defensive That's play okay. there. Oh, Jake not able to steal the boost, so Pizza Roll's got a chance here. Going to have to just send it to his own corner, though, after he loses control. Oh, what a flick! That was nice. Lofty. Licks it up and plops right down under the crossbar. Oh, it does actually touch the crossbar, but still it goes down into the net. What a great flick there from Jake. But the score at 3-2 again. So Shay, do you want to change your prediction? Do you think uh do you think Jake's gonna win now or are you still gonna stick with pizza rolls? Uh yeah, I know. I think Jake might actually take the dub. Yeah. I like to flip flop my votes. I'll just vote for the uh the winning side. Woo! I'm always on the winning team. <laughs> so you mean like if, uh, you know, now that you said Jake is winning, if he's rolls comes back, makes it game five and is up by two goals with 30 seconds left, are you, you going to predict that he's rolls is going to win? 
Just to yeah. secure the winning prediction. Yep. <laughs> or are you trying to change prediction. your prediction to Jake so that way you can cast your curse Jake instead? Hmm. Yeah. Very that fishy. Was, I thought about that. Very fishy. And we can see what happens. How many slips credits are they paying you to do this? <laughs> No one pays me anything in this server. Well, you are the owner, so it's really your job to pay us. I should pay myself. I'm gonna reduce Imagine the prize pool. Paying yourself? Like... Wow. <laughs> Kinda toxic. Uh, Not gonna lie. You think next week, if I predict correctly who will win, they'll like give me some of the prize pool money? You gonna ask them? <laughs> Yeah? Yeah, it's just uh, go into uh, Yaha's team chat, be like, Hey guys, if I predict you to win the tournament next week, do you think you'll give me $5 of the prize pool? Put that, that into every they, they each get 25 Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they <laughs> get $25, and then you get $5, so it's an That sounds like split. such a good deal! Yeah, even split. $80 is wow. so hard to split three ways. You're really just doing them a favor, Shay. That's true. Wow. You are so smart. I'm gonna do that. But I'm gonna put it in every team chat, so no matter who wins, I get the five dollars. <laughs> but see, you can't predict every team to be the winner, though. But they'll all just think that I'm predicting for them. But I'll I'll be sure to ask you for your final locked-in prediction before the uh, starts. For next week? Dang. Yeah. <laughs> for this week, I'll, we can keep it a secret. So you can just okay. take, you know, like... However much money, thirty nine dollars. You can take nine dollars <laughs> for this this week. You know, mm -hmm. this one's more important, so you gotta get paid more. Exactly. <clears throat> Jake has an opportunity here. Pete's rolls flipping back kind of slow, but he pops the ball really high. Oh, almost uh, almost too awkward for Pete's rolls to save it, but he does save it off the backboard. Gets boost. Flicks it high again, needs to flick that one a little bit with a little bit more speed. Shot could be too high, but it does find its way under the crossbar. Lead cut to one. Pizza rolls has a chance here. Definitely doing better than I expected on the EU server, especially. But again, this is not like this is not the 1v1 play that I've come to expect from Jake either. Jake is not looking like normal Jake. Ooh, there's a good shot there. Wow. Increases Just his lead back. Right behind his back. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, you think this is winnable? <laughs> By pizza? Winnable, yes. Still winnable, okay. honestly. Still, Still winnable. winnable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know. <laughs> That, and you just saw two kickoff goals happen for Jake and just as easily happen for Pete's rolls. Although I will say, I think Jake has the better kickoff, so I'm not really sure. I don't think there's any hope. Maybe next game. I think it should be okay. Oh, never mind. Maybe there is no hope. 7-3 here. With 40 seconds. Yeah, 40 seconds. I mean, don't get me wrong. Still winnable, honestly, if your pizza rolls. Of course. But Jake yeah. has just put down the onslaught of goals here at the very end of the game. Increases his lead from one to four in the span of like 20 seconds. Maybe another one here. Good save, though, from pizza rolls. Jake trying to find a small pop over his opponent. Side challenge uh, there, gets it by pizza rolls. Oh, I think we're getting into the realm of not enough time left. Has to score a goal every four seconds now. You think it's bad if I ask why we have a Brazil emote? <laughs> what is the backstory to that? So are you not familiar with getting Brazil? No. So during the World no. Cup, uh, the last World Cup, I, I forgot what year it was, honestly. I think it was 2018. Um... Uh, but during the last World Cup, Brazil 
was part of a uh, part of quite a quite an embarrassing score line of seven to one, which is actually inc incredibly insane for soccer or football, depending on where you're from. And so now, whenever people get a seven one score line, they say that they Brazilled you. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, I understand now. Are we ready for this third matchup? We are ready for this third matchup. We are cutting close to tournament time, yeah. so hopefully, uh, you know, for the sake of tourney time, I now am a fan of Jake to win. Not a, <laughs> but obviously, as far as these players go as individuals, I am not a fan of either one of them. I hate both of them. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, I would like to see, of course, uh, them go to game five. But I do know these two, and I do know that if Pete's Rolls does lose this in a 3-0 sweep, then he will challenge Jake again within the coming weeks, and we'll have another shot at the title. Oh, is it 2014? That's all right. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm uh, quite a little out of it, and my head is basically all fog right now. It's okay, we're having a chill pre-show today. <laughs> nice little own goal there from Pizza Rolls to start off game three. Uh, still loading for me. Yeah, you got disconnected from the party. Probably best to uh, just exit out. See if I can get you back in here. Two zero early here for Jake. Pete's rolls has a chance. Goes out for boost. Jake with low boost. Looking for the double tap. Gonna find a good pinch into the top left corner. Cuts the lead to one. Two to one in favor of Jake so far early on in this game. Fifty there is going to go in favor of Jake. Does get into the goalie box. Going to spill out into the corner, however, as we await Shay to get back into the lobby. Uh, hmm. The lobby info did just get posted in staff hall for you, by the way. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't. I think the join, <clears throat> the join party match is still broken. Oh, sorry. I do not like the sound of Jake's boost. I just heard it, but like. I just am not a fan. It's one thing I haven't really looked at here as the cars and their uh, their cosmetics so far. Jake's going to get another goal here. Man, just another really rough challenge here from Pizza Rolls. 3-1 to one now for Jake. I think you can start seeing a little bit of the desperation coming out from Pizza Rolls. Trying his best to get up in this game. Doesn't want to get swept 3-0 to zero, as it looks like he may be on the verge of it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, you back in? Got it good. All right, well then, grace us with your beautiful casting. Okay, three to one, and Jake scores once again. Just making this so much... <laughs> Poor Pizza, he's no... I don't think he's going to be able to pass this up. Yeah, uh, definitely... Definitely a rough matchup here for Pizza, especially playing on EU servers. <clears throat> I'd like to see if Pizza could maybe win in a in an all game US series. True. Because we, they did play all three of these games now in EU. Uh, now yeah. to be fair though, Pizza Rolls has not had bad ping. A hundred ping really isn't that bad. 
especially when you consider that he's playing in another country's servers right now. For instance, whenever I played Jake on EU servers, I was getting roughly like 140 to 150 ping. And, but that's also because I'm in the central U.S. I'm all the way out in Texas, so it makes sense that I would get a little bit worse uh, ping than someone that's living on the East Coast. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so this match is definitely just kind of just seeing how Jake will be able to will go about this win. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh... Uh, very close game still here, though, I think. I mean, you know, Peace Rolls has a chance of winning here in Game 3. Unfortunately, I do not believe uh, that we will be able to watch Game 4 and 5 if they do happen. That will be up to, uh, you know, our people behind the scenes, Nas and GJ mostly, see what they want to do. But we do need to get the tourney rolling right around 6, and it is 3 minutes till that time. So uh, if Jake puts this one away cleanly, we'll, it'll cause no issues. But it's gonna, we'll have to figure out exactly what'll happen here if Pizza Rolls does manage to pull out the win here in game three. But as I say that, Jake increases his lead, trying to pull away as much as he can, get the sweep going. Jake says it's not going to game four, no worries. <laughs> I would have to probably, uh, you know, say that he's right. Yeah. Jake has okay. uh, clearly gotten a little more warmed up as the time has gone on. Pizza Rolls uh, looks like he hasn't really gotten warmed up yet. Still looks a little loose. Ceiling shot here. Could potentially be something nice. Unfortunately, not going to be able to make contact. Lucky for him, Jake does miss the clear downfield, so his empty net is safe for now. Feathering a lot of boost on the ground, and he's using a lot of it. This is going to be really tough for him to have boost to get back around the ball. Does finally get to the mid boost here. Flicks it up high, tries to give himself a second to see his opponent and read the play, but Jake is going to send it away. Misses the mid boost there. Still has 44 to work with. Not going to be able to challenge Jake, and Jake is going to run away with another goal. And now he has double pizza roll score, six to three here. Oh, is our yeah. command not working? Uh, I guess not. But I sent the link if anyone wants to join the Discord and is watching. Does not have it. Um, whoever is saying who wants to play 2v2 and gold three, just join the Discord, then you can find someone in our channel. Just for that. <laughs> Team player finder. Oh, maybe a goal here. Good cut back on the dribble. Does get another goal here. A minute seven left to even up this game. Two, down two. Has a chance, but Jake still showing up pretty strong here. Has six goals to his name. Uh, said he was going for the Brazil here, but has unfortunately let up three too many now for that to happen. Fake kickoff from Pizza Rolls. Backfire straight into the net. Jake gets the 7-4 scoreline again. That's how game two ended, I believe. Yeah, you know, I actually do admire Pizza Rolls' perseverance. He is still trying in game three, and he's already gone up against Jake for the title, what, five times in the past? Yeah. He do be trying. He do be trying. Will he ever give up? I don't think so. You know, honestly, I don't think so either. Oh, but a good shot there. That could possibly be the nail in the coffin, not because it makes the game unwinnable, but I think Pizza is now just too far in his own head. He's playing slow. He's playing sloppy. Didn't even jump for that ball, just waited for it to land on his car. Knew his opponent was out of the net. Needed to hit that as quick as possible. Touch there, we'll keep it away from Pizza, but not gonna be able to get a shot on net. Now Pizza flipping back, dangerous, has low boost, shot on the back wall, not gonna be on target. 
Spezza with a lot of time here, going for something fancy maybe just to kind of give his give his morale a little boost. Knows that the game is pretty much out of reach at this point. As the clock winds down to 10, I'm going to comfortably call it for Jake to re retain the 1v1 title for the mid-ranked Division 1. 9-4 scoreline will seal the deal. Five seconds left. Literally impossible to uh, to come back now for overtime. So congratulations to Jake withholding the 1v1 title. I called it from the beginning. Shay called it from game two. Yeah, <laughs> right. I remember. I remember. You changed your mind. <laughs> You know, definitely, okay. definitely thanks to both players for coming out and playing during the pre-show. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I believe that's going to be it for the two of us. We're going to be signing off now uh, and let GJ run you guys into the main tournament. We appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to get into the Discord and use all those new features we talked about earlier today during the pre-show, and uh, you know we'll, we'll see you next time. Shay, any closing words? Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> See you next week. Bye. Bye.
Mm. Hello, hello, hello. This is K7, and with me is Wallaby Gangsta, and here we are for the weekly tournament. How you doing, Wallaby? I'm doing pretty well, K7. I'm happy to be here. We're going to be getting into another Sunday matchup here, and it's going to be really exciting. We got some uh, returning teams that are going to be putting down some major hurt. We have Ya yeah, Aha uh -huh returning to the stage. They're going to be they're the winner of the tournament 2 weeks ago, so they're definitely going to be looking to put down some heat. But on the other side of the bracket, we have Inferno who's going to be trying to repeat their loss or, or who's going to be trying to actually make up for their loss and their sweep against bad players in last week's tournament. So it's going to be really exciting. We've definitely got some good matchups that'll be going to you, but first we have the N7 Fandoms versus the Dragons in the round of 16. K7, right now we have some two teams that have been around for a bit. N7 Phantoms especially have been around for a while. Dragons haven't really been able to get a whole lot going recently. Uh, they have been falling out of the round of 16. But this is a matchup that they haven't really faced before. They've fell fallen to Midweast Gaming both times previously. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they're able to potentially get a little bit of a revenge story coming out of here against the N7 Phantoms, hopefully trying to make it into the quarterfinals for the first time. Indeed, indeed. It's definitely a comeback story for the Dragons to see them in the round of 16 against a strong opponent in the N7 Phantoms. This will be quite a notch in their belt if they're able to pull it off. But, uh, but still, my money is still on the N7 Phantoms. While they may have had some issues making it deep into tournaments lately, I think that they'll definitely make it make it through this one. So, uh, um, my money right now is going to be on the Phantoms, but the Dragons, I have a feeling they are coming for blood. They are working to push themselves to that next to that next level, to that next round. So they're going to give the Phantoms all their all their worth, but I do believe that the Phantoms should be coming out on top in this one. Yeah, I would definitely have to agree. And as we're going to get into the tail of the tape here, um, the N7 Phantoms do come out into this game, this first round, as the higher seed. And uh, they've just shown a lot of a potential. Uh, I think they've shown a lot of potential in the tournaments before. Dragons, while they have been definitely solid, have struggled against Medway's Gaming when we have seen them in the past. But as we look at the tail of the tape here, you can kind of see it is a little bit consistent with what we, what we were talking about. N7 Phantoms. Three GC1s on their side versus the Dragons with three C3s. It's actually very even. It's kind of impressive. Um, but, like, we're, I mean, looking at the tail of the tape, it's pretty consistent. When you have, like, C3, while very, very high, there's quite a bit of a jump between that and Grand Champ. So I do think that these MMR, the, the showing of these MMRs is going to be consistent with what we're going to be seeing uh, into this first game uh, for sure. But if you're the Dragons... What do you, in your opinion here, K7, what do you think you need to really do to potentially maybe take some surprise games off N7? To take some surprise games off, sen off, N7, uh, bleh, off N7, you need to have your counter game really, really strong. Like, N7 doesn't mess up very often, so... Y on the times that they do, you need to capitalize. You need to be able to make that fast break and push forward to, to essentially get goals yourself. Because the opportunities are probably going to be few and far between. So when those opportunities arrive, they need to capitalize. They need to push forward and keep that defense game strong. So that's going to be absolutely key for the Dragons if they want to take any games from N7 for this one. Yeah, I would definitely have to agree here. Um, and they're going to have a kind of a tough road, too, if they do get through here. Because they're going to have a really interesting matchup coming up pretty soon. And we're going to get the bracket up soon so we can see maybe what some of these uh, looks are going to be going out of the, uh, for the potential future games. Uh, so we can kind of see the future of this tournament. You see that we're going to have right now uh, N7 Phantoms versus Dragons. If they win, they go against the winner of Reboot and Bad Players. Bad Players is the reigning champion currently and they after taking a really heavy game against a heavy match against inferno it's going to be kind of tough for them i definitely think to come back and potentially get this win going forward uh if you're the n7 phantoms at least and or the dragons whoever ends up taking this one but regardless a few other really interesting matchups i think on this bracket you have bracket you have m22 original versus hold my rice mm -hmm. hold my rice is a, a low mmr but they have absolutely shown that that is completely inaccurate. You cannot go with that because M22 Original, 
and M22 original have, have actually made changes to their roster and they also look way stronger. So that's a very, very tough matchup for both of them. They're actually currently one and one against each other. So it's really interesting okay. to see how that goes. And a couple other really interesting matchups as well. Kinetic versus blue. Blue is the old Northern Shield. So they are get definitely going to be looking. They've kind of struggled a little bit in some of the quarterfinal matchups. Uh, and so they're going to be looking to potentially make it a little bit further here. XV, XVB versus Tribe. Both are very up-and-coming teams that um, have been in the tournaments uh, one or two times. Both of them doing very well. And then you have Inferno down there against Power Gaming. and It's going to be a tough one for Power. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt they 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 had a very tough draw for this bracket facing facing a tournament winner in Inferno. Uh, a re- how many ha- how many have Inferno won so far? I lost. I, I can't remember. I I know they've won at least one. They <laughs> I yeah I think they've won three three. Okay, yeah it's, it's mm-hmm. I, 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 against a against a three tournament winner. Power Gaming is going to have a very very tough game ahead of them for that one so i think yeah inferno's probably gonna make it to the next round and face off against either xvb or tribe uh so it's it's gonna be a tough gonna be a tough path for all three of those squads to make it past the first if not the second round so Mm. it's it's gonna be tough but my in my opinion i think i'm 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 putting my money on uh Oh, as we see in chat, it seems that hold my rice uh, forfeit for not enough players. So oh. M22 may be moving on regardless. So, uh, so unfortunately, uh, yeah, <laughs> on that one, <laughs> that's, that's, that's rough. <laughs> All yeah, right, so, oh man, that's tough because that that was going to be a really, really good starting match. But mm-hmm. uh, I was looking okay. forward to that one. But yeah, I was as well for certainly. Happens, but, happens. Definitely, definitely some power hitters here, but we are going to be going into the, our first round of 16. We have the Dragons versus N7 Phantoms. N7 Phantoms are going to be on the blue side. Dragons are going to be in the orange. And I'm ready. I'm really excited to get into this, K7. I think that this is going to be a really interesting matchup. I'm really excited to see how uh, the Dragons potentially maybe come into this game. I'll take it indeed, away. Indeed, indeed. And here we go. Five minutes on the clock. Here we go. Go and it looks like Kill You pushes it up the wall, but WLVF bounces off the wall, going for the double tap, and he take. Oh, look at that one right off the bat! With six seconds into the game, a beautiful pass by W flying in the air, and Fire Phantom just taking it from him and putting it home for a very, very quick goal. Uh, one one oh N seven going forward. Here's the tip. Next tip off, and N seven bounces it into into Dragon territory and another shot but this time it goes flying into the corner with a uh, um3 bouncing up the wall going for a fast break get trying to get past the fans vendor he does here's the cross and stopped by fire phantom bouncing forward into the waiting arms of killed you kill pushing it forward but stolen by wlvf and wlvf then takes out um3 as the ball bounces in the corner up the wall and uh looks like killed you pushing forward and wlvf coming back from the dead taking a shot and chuckles making the save going on the rebound and another save beautiful defense there by the dragons as they stop two very good attempts by by the phantoms and the phantoms keeping it into dragons territory bouncing up off the wall here comes penguin missing it mistiming it looks like and killed you trying to go for the clear bouncing it up the wall with wlvf trying to push it forward here comes fire phantom keeping it midfield bouncing it off the ceiling pushing it forward going for a setup getting it past one defender but not able to get past the second one as he was the only one of his team down there at that time and wlvf getting it off the rebound and chuckles with another save beautiful beautiful play there and a nice long shot at the goal and saved by wlvf with a millimeter to spare and here comes penguin juggling over the heads of the dragons and in the goal off the rebound beautiful beautiful play there by the n7 phantoms as penguin carries it the whole way gets it past two defenders gets himself blown up for his efforts but the ball flows in Beautiful, beautiful play there by N7. What happened there? Yeah, N7 going up 2-0 and a great dribble play. Um was not unfortunately able to get there with the uh, third back rotation, but the Dragons are definitely looking to respond here. They're trying to get into uh, the offensive territory. Unfortunately, right now, though, K7, it looks like the, the counterattacks that we were talking about has definitely really not been there for the Dragons so far. They're going to have to potentially get a little bit more vision, try to look for some of these uh 
uh, potential addition kick out uh, passes to try to get more offense going down on that counter attack. So it's really interesting to see how they'll respond here with three minutes left in the match. Indeed, indeed. And we have the Dragons trying to push forward off, off a counter themselves, but N7 staying with it. Basically, they're countering the counters. And here comes another counter there, but stopped again by the N7 Phantoms. Their defense is absolutely a brick wall right now. As, as now we have a midfield battle pushing it into the corner of the Dragons' territory. UM3 pushing forward, getting it, trying to get it past Penguin, but Penguin is having none of that. Counter it himself, bouncing it off the ceiling. Here's the set, and the shot killed you with the save. Beautiful, beautiful save there. Nice read the entire way by Killed, but Fire Phantom staying with it, keeping the ball into Dragon's territory, but eventually the Dragons get it past him, but WLVF stops at midfield himself. The N7 midfield game is absolutely on point right now as they're stopping almost every offensive push. But as I say that, the Dragons make an offensive push themselves as both Killju and Penguin take each other out. Now we have a 2v2 match going on with a with an advantage for the defense because they get back to the position very soon as the ball bounces in front of the Dragons goal going up chuckles with the juggle and the save very close one there for the N7 Phantoms but some good defense and a miscommunication for the Dragons bouncing it forward in front of their goal but Killju stays with it and stops the shot by Penguin as the N7 keeps the ball into Dragons territory pushing it forward Getting it back and forth. Here's the shot and the slow one easily stopped by the Dragons. And the Dragons on the counterattack. Here's the here's the shot and scores. Beautiful wall, beautiful wall pass by Killed as UM3 dunks it home. Yeah, absolutely. UM3 giving, getting it off of a beautiful pass, and that's a perfect counterattack. But right now, it definitely going to Dragons. They're down by one, a minute 20 left, and it's 10 shots to three in favor of N7 Phantoms. So they're definitely going to have to potentially work to get some a little bit more offensive and midfield pressure to be, potentially get control of this game as they're trying to tie it up here and send it into overtime, kid. Indeed, indeed. But as we see right now, we have N7 trying to stop the ball from coming into their own territory, and they do. Fire Phantom with a nice little juggle there, but UM3 Staying with it. WLVF, though, counters it. Here's the cross and saved by Killed You. And Killed gets killed for his efforts. And another miscommunication by the Dragons as UM3 bounces his own teammate out of position. But Killed You is able to stay with it, trying to keep it forward. But the N7 Phantoms, another midfield stop, keeping it into their territory. But Dragons with a nice counter, pushing forward into the corner. And Chuckles trying to get the ball, trying to get a nice pass to his teammate. Right into the arms, kills you. Nice shot off the wall. Here's the cross and stopped by N7. But Chuckles is there midfield, keeping it into N7 territory as Kills you is unable to make the connection. And Penguin then takes out UM3. But there's Chuckles on the defense. But WLVF keeps it forward off the wall. Just missing, bouncing it into the midfield. But there's the N7 Phantoms once again. It's Fire Phantom keeping it into the corner. UM3 trying to get it out. Here goes Penguin. Nice intercept. Nice cross. And saved again by Chuckles. That is his third save of the game. Nice play there. Can the, can the Dragons make a fast break out of this one? No. N7 Phantoms take game one with with a beautiful, beautiful defensive effort with a score of 2-1. to one. Oh, yeah, that wow. was a massive game there for the Phantoms. Dragons did have a beautiful counterattack right there, but unfortunately, it, the only one counter was able to be a success on this never-ending onslaught of offense for the N7 Phantoms. Yeah, N7 came out firing. They had 13 shots on the game, and I honestly, I'm pretty sure eight of those came within the first three minutes of the game. So the Dragons definitely were bringing it back there in the middle of the game. But like you said, only one counterattack was unfortunately able to be successful for them. So they're definitely going to be looking to get a little bit more midfield control. I think definitely be looking for those outlets. But N7, I mean, really fast game coming out from them. A ton of shots on uh, Wolf, especially was one of the one of the players for N7 Phantoms. Even though he's on the bottom of the scoreboard, he came out and he had a ton of speed, a ton of pressure. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see if he is able to make a comeback there uh, and bring. Uh, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see if he's going to be able to put some of the more of those shots down. But we're going to be getting into game two. N7 Phantoms do take game one, so it's going to be interesting to see how Dragons do respond to that as I guarantee you N7 will be coming out very fast again here, Kay. Indeed, indeed. And 
I'm not sure what's going on, but it looks like something like uh, we may have a new arena, but doesn't look like it. Uh, for some reason, I got another party invite from uh, from our uh, producer backstage, but uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. But all right, we have ourselves a game. Five minutes on the clock. Here we go. And the Dragons taking the tip on going for a fast break right now off the bat. Trying to do what the N7 Phantoms did to themselves. And they do. Unfortunately, not six seconds. This is they scored it within seven seconds. So that was a beautiful, beautiful pass there by the Dragons and UM3 dunking at home. He's the scorer for that team for their team today. And game two, starting off with a bang, just like game one. And the Dragons making an impact early on. Beautiful tip off and safe. Snagged by WLVF off the wall as the ball gets intercepted and bounced into the corner. Here comes Phantom off the back wall. Can they score it? No, not yet. Here comes the Phantom's first shot and chuckles with the clear. But Penguin midfield intercepting it, keeping it in the Dragon's territory as the ball gets bounced into the corner. Up off the ceiling. Can WLVF do anything with it? No. As Chuckles then makes the clear himself into the weight and arms of, U of UM3. But little off target as the ball bounces into the ceiling and here comes the n7 counter attack and intercepted by um3 into the drag into the phantoms corner as the ball bounces up and down because everyone's hitting everybody <laughs> here comes kills you bounce off the wall and intercepted by penguin beautiful interception there but chuckles is there midfield and gets himself exploded for his effort as penguin takes him out and the dragons keep on that offense even though they're down one and they scored beautiful play by the dragons and killed you Coming in midfield off a rather unfortunate break by WLVF. Bouncing it off the wall to himself and scoring it as they were down two players to three. And they are now up 2 nothing in game two with four minutes left to go. What happened there? Yeah, oh, I mean, look at that beautiful save by WLVF. I'm sorry for interrupting you, man. But that was a quick shot. Yeah, Dragons are coming out with some speed here, definitely. Three minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this game, and already up by two when they were only even only able to score one the entire game last game for game one. So they're definitely coming out with the speed. They got a lot more midfield control here, which is ultimately what we were talking about what they needed to get to potentially get into this game. Let's see if they're able to keep up this pressure going forward here in game two. Indeed, indeed. But here's a beautiful shot Ooh. by the Phantoms as they cut the lead in half. A nice pass by Fa by Fire Phantom off the back wall. Getting it past kills you right into the waiting arms of WLVF. And a novel attempt there by Chuckles on the save. But the momentum was a little bit too strong. And the N7 Phantoms cut the lead in half. It is now 2-1 to one Dragons. And it looks like the Phantoms have won the tip off. Go for a quick shot. But Chuckles staying with it. Trying for the save. Go for the clear but right to the arms of penguin here's the shot um3 with the save this time right into um3 pushing it forward into the into phantom's territory and off the wall fast break for wl for wl go for the shot and scores it that is a beautiful beautiful counter play by the phantoms let's see what happened there wlvf getting the rebound and just putting it right at the goal chuckles unable to get back in time and was a millimeter off of that save yeah chuckles look a little bit it looks like he was going for the mid boost over on the side and got burned for it. it was the third back not able to get back in time really good shot by wolf to get it down there in time but right away dragons are coming out with the pressure again they're not trying to slow down they gave up their two goal lead very quickly but i definitely think that they are not done in this game here okay not at all dragons are definitely putting an effort into this one go for a shot just missed it it looked like um3 was just trying to keep himself out of the path of the ball and oh no look like look like fire phantom scored an own goal for himself off a beautiful cross there by um by by the dragons that was a team effort there and phantom with the momentum putting it into his own goal can we get an f in chat for that Wow, that was really, break there. Ugh, really unfortunate. A, little, a good pinch there by UM3 to get it, but they're there. Uh, looks like N7 right away coming off the kickoff. They're definitely looking for that offensive pressure. 224 left in the game. 3 2 in favor of the Dragons. 1 0 in favor of the N7 Phantoms for the series. It's gonna be, we're getting into the back half of game two. It's going to be really interesting. K7, what are you looking for here out of the N7 Phantoms to potentially get back in this game? Uh, well, right now they need to get themselves back in order because it looks like they were trying to rush a couple things going forward. And unfortunately, that seems to have 
cost them as the counter attacks of the dragons have just been have been crazy have just been absolutely crazy and here we go again with another counter attack by the dragons crossing in front of the goal but no one's there to put it home unfortunate break there for the dragons because that could have been a guaranteed goal but here we go with killed you bouncing off the wall and intercepted by wlvf chuckles with a midfield play Kills you with a beautiful assist and off the back wall by UM3. Nice attempt there as Fire Phantom clears it into Dragon's territory, but kills you getting the ball back, getting it past one, pushing it forward into the weight and arms of Penguin midfield. As Penguin chips it forward, here comes UM3 going forward and Fire Phantom going for the cross himself. Push it forward and saved by the Dragons. As Chuckles now going for midair. Nice clear, but Fire Phantom waiting midfield. Here's the shot and kills you with the save squaring himself up to put himself in the path of the ball nice attempt there but here comes here comes the dragons once again um3 with the push bouncing into the ceiling off a attempt at a midfield interception and wlvf pushing forward here comes chuckles once again with a defensive play penguin go for the shot and chuckles back once again with a nice save here comes um3 pushing forward up the wall we have N7 bouncing midfield. Penguin taking control. Nice little double tap off the wall. Pushing it into into Dragon's territory and intercepted by the Dragons. UM3 going for the clear and Fire Phantom coming in hot. Here's the nice little cross. Here's the shot and stopped by Killer. Nice interception there. Reading it the entire way as the ball just bounces forward. And open goal for the N7 Phantoms. Look at that play right there. UM3. Oh, that was a beautiful block. Like it was a shot block by WLVF, spiking it down right into the weight and arms of his teammate who scores at home. Wow, yeah, it looks like a little bit of a mishap on the back end. I'm not sure if Chuckles got bumped or something. Uh, he's been really solid on defense this whole time, so I imagine that's what it is. And ooh, that was really close. But yeah, three, three, close. 15 seconds remaining here. The Dragons need to get this win in either regulation or overtime to stay alive in this series. So we're going to be seeing how they respond here as we get to the five second mark, okay? Indeed, indeed. It looked like we had slight miscommunication there as the Dragons end up bumping into each other. Here comes the shot by Chuckles. Nice attempt, but WLVF makes the stop, and we are going into overtime. And here's our tip off in overtime. Nice little dead fish there floating above him. Here comes Kilcher on the shot off target, off the wall, and he goes for the goal himself as the Dragons take game two in overtime. That was a beautiful play by Kilja. Oh man, it looks like a little bit of a miscue by Wolf there on the side wall. Kilja gets the nice read over into the into the net, and it's going to be in favor of Dragons. They take game two. They they take it away four three in overtime. And right away, looking at the shots here on the scoreboard, you can automatically see the difference between game one and game two. Ten shots to six in this one in favor of Dragons, whereas last time it was a double digit deficit for the Dragons in shots. So the offensive pressure is significantly higher here for this game. Chuckles at the bottom of the leaderboard, but do not like he is absolutely was a crucial part of the Dragons, uh, of the Dragons rotations, a huge defensive anchor for them throughout the entire game. Really Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, offense, a lot of offense coming out. Kilja more seems to be very, very solid pass, passing player. Uh, um, th UM3 is definitely right there for a lot of the offensive shots, but Chuckles, a very good defensive anchor here. So I definitely think it's an integral part, and I think that that's going to be a huge part of what they need going into Game 3. You're definitely going to need that, and I think that ultimately Dragons are going to be looking for more of that midfield control, more of that midfield play in order to beat uh, N7 in game three k7 you said that you think that and the phantoms are going to be taking this series do you still believe that going into this this game three if the dragons put up that offensive ever like they did in game two then i may have to change my my prediction but i do think the phantoms will be able to pick themselves up off the ground after that one because that was that was a tough break there for the phantoms but as we said before if the dragons put their counter game keep keep their counter game going as solid as they did in game two the dragons can definitely take this series yeah, certainly and but the n7 phantoms they need to they, they need to pull themselves together because they there were a lot of miscommunications on that one and here but here we go five minutes on the clock and the game started and the dragons with a very quick offensive effort going for that go for that quick score like they did in game two but is unable to connect this time unfortunately and the n7 phantoms coming in hot and saved by um by umar 
Umar or UM3. It doesn't matter. I'll call him UM3 because I like well. to call him that. So, but here we go. Chuckles pushing it forward, bouncing it off the wall, going for the shot, pinched up into the sky, and Penguin pushing it forward himself right into the weight and arms of Kills You. Nice heads up play by Killed, staying back, getting ready for that shot, and the cross oh. and saved by Chuckles. That was a beautiful, beautiful attempt there. <laughs> but Chuckles' defense has just been absolutely on point thus yeah. far so. and here we go bounce forth midfield battle here comes Kilger with the shot and wlvf with a nice stop Mid balls bounce midfield up the wall here comes fire phantom up into the ceiling into the corner and chuckles once again intercepting the ball trying to stay with it unable to do so but the but the misdirection kept it into the corner nice play there by the n7 by by the N7 Phantoms trying for the shot, but great defense by the Dragons. And Fire Phantom, nice nice midfield job there. Nice, a lot of interceptions going forward. You on three, bouncing off the wall, into the weight and arms of Penguin. <laughs> Penguin, unfortunately, not his teammate. And WLVF getting the ball into the corner and cleared by the Dragons. Fire Phantom, nice midfield stop. Ooh. But killed you, bouncing it forward, pushing it up the wall. Here comes UM3, bouncing it forward. Here goes, trying for the double tap, unable to square it up as Penguin chips it over the heads of the defenders, bouncing off the back wall, go for the shot, not able to do anything out of that one. But here comes Fire Phantom, midfield once again. UM3, Fire Phantom bouncing forward, but Penguin ends up pushing it into Dragon's territory, going for the cross and cleared by Chuckles. All right, here goes WLVF trying to stop the ball and nice defensive play. And while Kilja had a straight up shot, UM3 bounced it into the corner. That looked like another miscommunication or an ill-timed misdirect, but Chuckles going for the shot, but Fire Fa getting it past one defender, but Fire Phantom staying with it for the save. We are still at 0-0 with 2.45 left to go. Penguin bouncing at midfield here. Curie comes and stopped by UM3. Pushing it forward into the corner. Fire Phantom trying to get it out of his own territory, and he does so, but Chuckles is midfield with the interception, and WLVF, nice aerial shot there, and going for the goal off target. Unfortunate break there for the N7 Phantoms in this defensive battle. UM3, nice chip, but the N7 Phantoms are unfazed. As a, looks like Fire Phantom had a little miss on that one, but Penguin was able to push it into the side for WLVF. Penguin with the shot and stopped by Kilja. And Fire Phantom midfield once again, pushing forward, but here comes the Dragons. Bounce it, here's the cross, and the shot off the top of the crossbar. But on the rebound, Kilja is there. He scores it, and the Dragons take a late to a 1-0 lead in Game 3. Beautiful heads-up play by Kilja off a very close shot by UM3. Yeah, Beautiful play there by the Dragons. Unfortunately, missed the open net there, but was able to get it up off the backboard, and Kilja came in with a great finish onto that. But right now, uh, the N7 Phantoms are looking to go offense. I do think the Dragons are going to have to be a little bit... Whoa, that was a crazy oh. finish by Chuckles. <laughs> I do think that the Dragons are going to have to be a little bit careful, though. There have been a little bit of scary moments with their third man a little bit too far up. So I'm definitely going to be interested to see if that they're able to clean some of that up and potentially uh, hold on to this 1-0 lead in Game 3 and take the series. Okay. Indeed, indeed. Well, either way, the Phantoms need to pull out pull out some offense from wherever they keep it, and they need to do it fast, because right now, the Dragons are up in a deciding game three for themselves. But Dragons now pushing on the offense, keeping it into N7 territory. This is not a good sign for N7, but a beautiful counter shot and blocked by UM3. But WLVS stays with it and off the post, but on the rebound, Penguin with the score. And we are tied once again with a minute seven left to go. One, two, three shots, and finally it goes in. Yeah, Penguin getting up off the cleanup. Umar doing anything he could to stop that from going in, but was not able to do it. He was alone, and unfortunately for for the Dragons, and fortunately for the Enzo family, oh, no! Elja off the kickoff. 2-1 oh! in favor of Dragons, and oh man, if you're an N7 fan of play right now, that is killer for your mental. Oh, oh, that man. is a backbreaker. An immediate response goal by the Dragons off the tip off. And oh, from that replay, it looked like WLVF jumped a split second too soon as the ball just gets snuck past him on a beautiful angle there. And Kilja getting the lead for his for his team. And Kilja going forward, pushing forward, but Fire Phantom on the deflect. UM3 with the shot. WLVF getting back in time. 
with less than a minute left to play. N7 Phantoms are on death's door right now as the ball gets pushed forward. Chuckles with the intercept, gets it past one. Can Chuckles score it? No! Nice defensive stop by the N7 Phantoms, but they need more than defense right now with 30 seconds left to go as the Dragons offense is just pushing forward. We may have an upset alert early, but Penguin pushing it forward, getting it into Dragons territory, finally knocking into UM3. Here's the cross and UM3 staying with it, sticking himself to the wall, timing that jump perfectly. Here comes here goes Penguin with the shot and kills you with the stop. Can we see an upset early? Three, two, one, game, Dragons. Wow. Wow. We have an early upset here with the Dragons taking a solid, solid victory from the N7 Phantoms. What happened there? I... Uh Ah, a close, a close games here. You know, it definitely, again, Dragons were taking the control with the shots. They looked pretty in control, honestly, the whole game, which, but like, between the difference between game one, game two, and game three were huge. Game one was all N7 Phantoms. It was all like they had full control of it, but the Dragons in game two and game three come in, they take control of it, they move forward with the series win. And N7 Phantoms, unfortunately for them, again, their, their round of 16 woe do continue the dragons end their streak of not making it into uh, making it into the quarterfinals and as they do move forward and they will be likely taking on let's see they'll be going against the winner of reboot and bad players so they took a great series here against the N7 Phantoms, but I guarantee you that next series for them is going to be really tough. They're going to be have to be going have to be going into that next match with the exact same intensity that they ended with here in this one. Okay, but we are going to get into Infernal versus Tribe moving forward. Any other thoughts on this game that you have? On this one, well, the Dragons definitely pulled off one hell of an upset off a tournament mainstay in the N7 Phantoms. And I don't know about you, but I think I may be a bad luck charm for the N7 Phantoms. I am K7, and unfortunately, that is seems to be a bad luck notification for the N7 Phantoms, to be perfectly honest. Because I've rooted for them twice so far, and both games that I've that I've covered for them, they have lost. I, uh, uh, maybe they're gonna be looking for you know you know next time next time we're just gonna have to go with the other one we'll see we'll see if maybe they potentially <laughs> have a little bit more love. Uh, but, but we, still, that was a beautiful, beautiful old game overall. N7 came out solid in that first round. Even, But as we saw in that first game, the Dragons can definitely put on some offense. Mm -hmm. Even though they, it was a little too little too late in game one, we saw it in game two as they came on strong with some early goals. And in game three, we, we saw it on the tip-off. They can score goals at an instant. And... That was that was a difference maker. Their counters worked. They kept the pressure on the N7 Phantoms to force them into mistakes. And overall, they came in they came in with the with the win. They pulled off we we have we, we have ourselves one hell of an upset. Yeah. A well, great great job by the Dragons taking the, the the match against the N7 Phantoms in the round of 16. We are going to be moving forward though for our first quarterfinal match of the night. We're going to be seeing Inferno who is a mainstay in the Slips uh, tournaments. They are th a three-time tournament champions. It's going to be really tough for the Tribe who are going to be going against them to end up taking against it. The Tribe are uh, not a brand new team but this is their second tournament that they will be participating spinning in but last week they went against bad players and took and it was two one point games against who ended up being the tournament winners so mm -hmm. these this is a team that absolutely has a lot of potential um it, they are i think a college team so they're going they definitely have that chemistry with each other so they're going to be looking to see what they can end up be do doing against what is a, really a tournament favorite. So we will be mo moving into the tail of the tape here. And again, K7, we mentioned how the Dragons were uh, what we thought the weaker team against the N7 Phantoms. We were talking about what they needed to do. They didn't really look like the weaker team. Not at all. At this time, we know Inferno has incredible capabilities. The Tribe have a lot on their plate here. What, in your opinion, do you really need to see from Tribe in order to potentially take this away? 
Well, f- well, for the tribe, it's kind of sim- it's a similar situation that we saw with the that we saw with the dragons versus the N seven phantoms. There are there are there are going to be very limited opportunities, especially early on, to score. So mm-hmm. when those opportunities arise, they need to score quick and f- they need to score they need to score fast. To put yeah. it to put it simply, sorry, I'm tripping over my own dang words right now because <laughs> I'm still. I'm still on the high from that last game, especially with the UM3's missed shot, as he mentioned in chat. But Ooh. just making sure that that that, uh, <laughs> that gets noticed right now. But uh, yeah, it, the the tribe they they are a college team, so they have certainly they they all certainly know each other, most likely mm-hmm. in real life, and the, the the their chemistry should be should be on point, and they're gonna they they will need everything to click to beat Inferno because Inferno is. A finals mainstay. Yeah, like, not like, just a mainstay. Inferno, yeah, Infernos <laughs> is easily one of our one of the powerhouse teams is teams in slips. So for a tribe to pull off an upset here, that would be a bigger upset than Dragons versus N Seven, in my opinion. I I would have to one hundred percent agree with you, K. I definitely think though I'm gonna be a little spicy here. I think Inferno takes this one, but I think it's gonna be two one. I think that the okay. tribe. I think the tribes steal a game off of here. I, they 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 went against bad players. They were both one point games. One of them an overtime loss. I think the tribe have the capabilities of really going into this, but we'll definitely have to see. It's gonna be really tough for them going into this. We are gonna be getting into game one, Inferno versus Tribe, first round of the quarterfinals. K, take it away. Oh, and it looks oh. like unfortunately we do have a bit of an issue. We have a quick remake. <laughs> Unfortunately, it looks like one of the looks like one of the players was having an issue. So we are going to quickly remake the arena and get ourselves back into the game very, very shortly. Now that's it, it's it's okay. We want everyone to be at their connection best, as no I like to say. No excuses. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No excuses. If you win, you lose. Everyone, uh, you want everyone to be at their best, and especially if you're facing. Especially with for the for the Inferno, they want their they want their team to be at the at their peak. So yeah. uh, yep, we are filing back in, and uh, hopefully we will be getting started very shortly. Yeah, uh, definitely. As a as a side note, who do you think is going to be our MVP for this match? Ooh, okay. So a Gator is a huge huge pop off player. He has incredible offensive capability, but. I am a massive, massive fan of Jordan. I think he's always been the backbone of Inferno. I think that ultimately from the, from the outset, you're going to see uh, potentially Gator as a uh, MVP right out the gate. But I think Jordan is ultimately going to be that kind of like, you know, that kind of glue, that, that, that foundation for the MVP of the overall series. Uh, and that is that is a very very good point. But for me, I'm going to say my my early MVP is going to be Neb because he called for the restart. So I'm expecting <laughs> absolute MVP performance for him. And we are go- we are live. So here we go. Inferno making an early offensive push, but beautiful save there by Jacob as as uh, the tri- uh, sorry I need to get the, get the names right now. As the tribe now push it back into Inferno territory. Inferno pushing forward and stop. Yeah. Ah, try pushing it forward. Inferno making the counter. Here comes Gator in the corner, going for the cross and stopped by Chimney. Chimney 28 pushing it up the wall, but stopped by Jordan. Neb with a beautiful cross and Jacob with the with the clear and gets himself blown up for his efforts. But Legacy is there to regain control. Gets a pass. One Inferno defender pushing it forward into the corner and nice play by Jordan. Ooh, a little fake out there trying to throw Chimney off his game as the ball gets bounced into midfield right into the waiting arms of Gator. Gator pushing it forward and him and Legacy he matching up solid a beautiful shot there by neb but there's chimney making the save nice little chip shot and in front of the goal and scored beautiful beautiful heads up play there by jordan putting it home on a beautiful beautiful pass by neb look at that one setting Ooh. it perfectly for jordan off the defender attempt at a save little off little little tough break there for the tribe as the save just stops it right in front of their own goal and we have a dead fish neb with the early shot and stopped by jacob beautiful beautiful heads up play there by jacob as he stays with it pushing it forward on the counter balls floating in front of the territory but there's jordan with a nice clear and neb trying to keep it forward nice little cross there jacob taking the taking the clear pushing it into the other corner but there's gator bouncing it off the side here's the cross and stopped by legacy 
but there's Neb keeping it into their territory oh. and another N Jordan Neb connection as Inferno takes a two nothing lead beautiful intercept pass there by Neb right into the weight and arms of Jordan as he chips it home in the top right corner Wow, really unfortunate break there for Tribe, but a really good speed by the Inferno. I don't think that really is a whole lot Tribe could have done that situation. Jacob there as the third man trying to get up to that save, but great speed from Jordan, great pass from Neb, and right now Inferno is coming out with all cylinders fi firing. The Tribe have looked pretty good, but I have to say Inferno look like they are here and ready to play at 100% today, okay? Indeed, indeed. Unfortunate break there for the tribe to just oh. face up. But as I say that, Jacob with the juggle, beautiful goal right there. Let's watch what happens there. Jacob just staying with it, keeping the ball floating as he knocks the defender oh, 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 out of the oh. way as he floats it home. And the tribe are now on the board. Wow, great play there from Jacob. This is against, like, Neb is a very highly ranked player, so it's very tough to end up getting plays like that over these players. Great play from Jacob there to uh, to do it, though. Puts Tribe on the board, and really a really important goal for them, I think, here going into this game one. Ooh, unfortunate break there for Inferno, as it looked like the ball kind of lagged around someone, one of their cars and ended up not being a, ended up being a little bit too much of a set as the Infer as Inferno now, but staying with it, stops it in front of their front of the goal, but no one is able to finish it off this time. But Gator staying with the ball, bouncing it in the corner. Here comes off the wall, over the goal, and bouncing forward, but no one's there to finish it off as Chimney now makes the clear. Neb, though, with the midfield interception, bouncing into the corner. Up off the wall. Looks like a slight miscommunication there by Inferno. Unfortunate again. But their offense is just keeping going on all cylinders. Keeping the ball into tribe territory. And their ball control has just been absolutely on fire today. Yeah, so uh, and here we go. Chimney, the though, on the counterattack. Pushing it forward. But Jordan stops it. Jacob bouncing off the ceiling. But into the weight and arms of Gator. Here it comes. Pushing forward. Jo oh, Gator with a nice unfortunate time tap right there as Jordan was waiting for it to go forward but there's Neb on the defense pushing forward here he comes here's the cross and a little too much mustard on that one as the ball flies into the corner but Legacy trying to stop trying to keep the ball from trying to stop them from doing anything but here it comes balls midfield here comes Gator nice midfield shot right there pushing it into the corner but there's Legacy knocking it right back out into Inferno territory. Beautiful shot there, but there's Jordan staying with it. That might work in casual, but that is not going to work against Inferno. As Inferno pushes forward, here comes Gator with the chip shot off the wall. Here's the cross. Jordan with the shot, not quite. A little bit too much on that one as Jordan was unable to center it as the ball gets bounced into the corner once again. And here we go from the midfield. Legacy trying to stop it from their corner. And here comes Jordan. Wow, this is going back and forth faster than I can call it. <laughs> but here comes Neb bouncing it forward, pushing it into the corner. Here comes the cross, but there's there the tribe with a nice defensive effort. Oh. But unfortunate as the ball just gets tipped. There's Neb with the shot and Chimney with the cross and Blows gets <laughs> Jordan gets himself blown up on the beautiful shot there as Inferno takes a 3-1 lead. Wow, yeah, I mean, really, uh, like, unfortunate break there, Jacob. A little bit too far, I think, uh, as the second man on defense. Not able to get there. Great little sneak in by Jordan on that top corner. Down two now. Tribe have 45 seconds to potentially get this tied up. It's going to be a, re a really tough ask for them here, Kay, I think, uh, as we go into the remaining seconds of game one. Indeed, indeed. Like, they, they needed a goal quickly, and every second that tips off the clock is a second is a second closer for an Inferno victory right now. But here comes Jordan once again, but unable to tap it as Legacy makes the steal, chipping it forward into Inferno territory. They need to make something out of this one. Chimney with the shot, and Neb stopping it from coming even close. And here comes Jordan once again. Nice cross off the back of the wall. Unfortunate there for Inferno, but here comes Jacob with the shot shot and Jordan with another stop. Jordan pushing it forward. Here comes Jordan and Neb. Jordan juggling the ball, just rolling it home, but stopped by Jacob. Jacob's putting in every effort that he can, but the, there's just not enough time in the match as Inferno takes this one with a score of three to one. Uh, uh, really, honestly, pretty one-sided match offensive pressure goes you definitely mm. a 12 shot to two shot uh game here of uh, most of the game for game one was spent on the tribe end but 
I definitely think that uh, Tribe has the capabilities of uh, potentially bringing this back. This seems this to me. This looks a lot like the N7 versus um, Dragons match. A little bit higher play, I do think, from both teams. I actually think that both of these teams would have potentially won against uh, N7 or um, the Dragons. But regardless, it's it's a little bit uh, faster paced. And you're definitely not going to be seeing the mistakes from Inferno that we had with N7 Phantoms. So it's going to be up to Tribe to try their best to make it a lot, a little bit more clean here. And potentially, I think, just stronger touches. They have, they honestly, their rotations look pretty good. They definitely have good passing plays. And they have the, they have the visibility there. But they just are not, unfortunately, getting quite the... Um, uh, the oomph that they need, I think, on these plays to get it past in front of a lot of like slow rollers towards the net that were just kind of cleared away. But we're getting into game two, Inferno up 1 0. And uh, this is going to be really tough, I think, for Tribe here, K, to be able to take this game too. Indeed, indeed. Though the Tribe are putting up a fantastic defensive effort, just the offensive pressure that the Inferno is constantly putting on them is it's I just think that's just a little bit too too overwhelming for the tribe right now as as we see right there Gator just carried it home and look at that off the wall flying with it aerial juggles that was one two three taps mid air as he just he just carried it in I mean oh, that that's, is an that's... NBA jam three point line dunk and as Sheesh comes out from Jacob, that's exactly what we're thinking. I mean, that's all. That's that is the highlight play that I'm talking about. That Gator can just absolutely crank out. That's yeah, that tough is for a, the tribe here. That is an absolute clip if someone can do that for us, because that was that is something that you just want to oh. replay to your kids. And look at that one, Gator juggling it again, but this time it's Neb who dunks it home. Look at that off the wall. Oh, the, off Keep the corner, jump. off the wall, and Neb. I think I think Neb kind of stole that goal there from Gator. <laughs> but this is looking like this is looking like an early blowout for for Inferno. As I don't know what the tribe can do on this one. Nice save there by Legacy as they as they finally stay with it and they're able to make the stop. But beautiful shot by Legacy and Legacy takes it the entire distance of the court. As he takes it home, he makes the save, stays with it off the wall, and sneaks it past Inferno. Uh, Three players, okay. think, he do you think the tribe will be able to come back? Oh, I went, if Legacy can, look, Legacy's like, look, you've got double taps, you've got flip resets, I've got dunks. That's what, Kay's, <laughs> that, that's, what that's what he's got, Kay. And I, I, right now, though, Tribe, I mean, they definitely don't seem like they're down for the count quite yet, but it's going to be a really tough ask. I think that ultimately they have the potential. They just really need to kind of be pretty much perfect here against a really, really good Inferno team, Kay. Exactly. And I, I honestly, I think Inferno may have been playing a little lightly on that one, and Inferno mm -hmm. made them pay. Or not, not Inferno, In Legacy made Inferno pay on that one for taking them lightly. But... But th that just shows how good tr the tribe is, because normally if Inferno just starts playing with you, not much is going to happen. But the tribe made them pay for for their hubris. But now we're going to oh. see them, and oh no! Chimney's like, no, not yours. Own goal right there. Yeah, Inferno's going to put Inferno's going to give themselves a nice comfortable lead before they start playing around again. And unfortunately, <laughs> Chimney with the with a misread, dunking it home against his own team. And that is definitely deserving of an F in chat on that. Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, not a whole lot Chimney could do in that situation, but it's all it always hurts to be the one that puts it in. But oh, that is a, that's a mistake from Inferno that I think that the, the tribe absolutely needed to capitalize on. That is a miss net by Chimney there, right after the own goal himself too. I, I those that's the difference. I think if if tribe cannot capitalize on those very 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 few and far between mistakes i don't think that they can take this game too here okay indeed but look at that chimney with the shot but jordan is right there with the stop staying back making sure that no more mistakes happen <laughs> because it looked like they were they were playing a little lightly there again with a two goal lead because they think that they have this in the bag but you, you can't count tribe out you you, you can't you can't go easy on them. Let's put it no. that way. Inferno <laughs> needs to play at their best to beat Tribe. Like, sure, they have a two-goal lead, but Tribe is a team that you can't just that, that you can't fall asleep on. So yeah. if you start playing easy, they will make you pay.
Which is a testament. It's a testament. Like, like the Inferno is our, like we said, Slip's mainstay winners. The fact that they have to play at their top to beat the tribe, that that was really, really close. <laughs> that was very close, and it looked like a slight misstep there by Gator on oh. that. But, yeah, but as mean, we go forward, yeah. uh, great it, effort. Indeed, great effort overall. But here comes Inferno once again, keeping the ball into Tribe territory as Tribe tries to make the stop. They do so right into the weight and arms of Chimney, but a little too fast. He couldn't get around in time as Inferno get back and make the stop. Oh, Legacy unable to make the tap in the air. But there's Jacob with the shot, but not enough on that one as Neb stays back and makes the save. But nice midfield stop by Chimney pushing into the corner of Inferno and Jordan with the, with the clear right there. But Legacy making the stop, pushing it forward as the ball goes flying over the heads of every member of the tribe. But Jacob gets back in time, makes the clear himself. Chimney going for the continuation, pushing it off the wall into the corner, and Neb with a defensive stop. Nice play there. Jacob was already mid-air to try to finish that off, but Inferno, Inferno's defense is holding strong. And here comes Jacob trying to make it forward, but there's Gator with the interception. Chimney with the nice rotation going forward, pushing it. And Gator once again, double tap in the air, getting it past one. Can he get it past two? Here's the cross. Jacob with the tip and floating in front of their own goal, but no one's there to make the shot. But as I say that, Jordan comes out of nowhere with an RKO and four to one Inferno. Yeah, oh man, uh, just a mistake there. Legacy, I don't think, saw Jordan coming over from the side. A a rare to see it from the Tribe. They haven't been doing it that much at all this game, but I mean, this is what we're talking about. The Inferno made a couple mistakes that the Tribe were not able to capitalize on, but Inferno, right away, first first big obvious mistake we see from the Tribe with a missed touch, and right away you see that they capitalize on it. So that is going to be the difference. 55 seconds left remaining here. A three-goal deficit for Tribe, and they're down one in the series already. It's going to be a really tough ask. I don't think that they're going to be able to do it, but I guarantee you that they will do their very best to make it close here, okay? Absolutely, absolutely. And while the, while the score may show may seem like Inferno's been dominating the game, while their offensive pressure has been just absolutely absurd, the defense of the Tribe has been really good. It's just Inferno is just that good. Mm-hmm. Inferno is absolutely an insane team to play, to play against. And even if you're putting on all cylinders... You're so you you still still lose four to one, yeah. And it's unfortunate draw there for the tribe, because honestly, I I would picture them as easily a semifinal team if they're facing anyone but Inferno. I, I have to agree. We get five seconds rolling down. It does look like Inferno are going to be taking this away. But in all, in all honesty, tribe. Great showing from them. Like you said, I, I agree. I think they're a semifinalist team with a different route to the fi- with uh to to that that point. And ultimately, I th- like an Inferno Tribe final. While again, these these games weren't exactly close score wise. I think that there were definitely some some instances that Tribe looked a little bit shaky on. I think their offense offensive consistency potentially could have had a little bit of work. Their uh, their defensive rotations were clean. Their midfield passing was clean. It was just really finishing it. And I think if you get that in a finals matchup. I absolutely think that you could potentially see an upset coming out from Tribe against a lot of these really, really, really talented teams. But Indeed. It was a very this- good show by Tribe, but unfortunately, mm-hmm. Inferno is an absolute juggernaut. And Neb, so- you, t- you mentioned him. I did. I did. And honestly, I, st- I still say Neb is my MVP because he made a lot of absolutely fantastic defensive stops. Yeah. And while, while, uh, while, while Jordan did bring home a lot of the goals – Almost all of them were assisted by Neb, so he was. He, I would put him as the playmaker for that game, and thus takes my MVP. I, I would have to agree 100. percent I do think Jacob on the other side takes the MVP for Tribe as well. He just looked really solid, really good offensive. Oh, I'm sorry, game. Jordan, not Jacob. Derp. Yep, Jacob on the yep, Jacob on the other side for 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 Tribe probably takes my MVP for that side. Um, but yeah, Neb just. Great presence throughout the entirety of the of the entire match, but we're gonna be getting into the uh, getting a look at the bracket here and maybe see how some of the other matches shook up, like kind of and see potentially what our semifinals are gonna look like. We are going to be getting into the two semi streamed semifinal matches. Who are you kind of looking to see here, Kay? Who who are some people that you some names that you're kind of looking at? For me, like like right now, it looks like wow. I actually, I actually think that was a bit of an upset. M22 original taken out blue. Tony, that new roster. 
That that is true. So they are they are already in the semifinals, and they're going to be facing off against Inferno. Wow. That I think has has potential to be a match of the night candidate for oh. sure. Yeah, I would I would have to agree. A really interesting thing to mention though. A one squad went past. Yeah, uh huh. And I do think that that was a forfeit. Um, mm -hmm. So it's going to be a potential MT2 Alpha A1 squad, bad player Dragon. Out of those four teams, I definitely think bad players are going to have a pretty, pretty guaranteed road to the finals. Uh, MT2 Alpha, Dragons, both of those teams are definitely really solid. We watch Dragons on stream here. A1 squad, mm -hmm. we haven't really seen a whole lot of. But. And I, as we say it, bad yep. players take out the Dragons. And I think that was their toughest competition. I, mm -hmm. I think that that was the hardest match they had to win. After that, they're going to be going into the... I, I think it's a pretty pretty solid chance going into the finals. And that Inferno MT2 original match, though. Yeah, oh, I agree. Match of the... I mean, I mean, Inferno yeah. bad player is always a good one, but... Oh, yeah. Oh. Was like that, that's something that, that, that we've seen before. And while, yes, right. almost all their matches could be counted as instant classics, I'm really looking forward to this Inferno M22 original match because... Because apparently, from from what I see in chat, M twenty two original two owed blue. Whoa, that's that's no small feat. And not, not to all. mention, you're going to be able to see that because that is the first semifinal match we are going to do. It's going to be Inferno versus M two two original, and we're going to be getting into the tail of the tape here. I, I mean, Inferno though, Inferno Tribals, it, they look yeah. clean, they look good. There was only one mistake I saw from Tribe on defense. Yeah, but and and it cost them. Yeah, but the, but but they still lost four to one. So even yeah. when they were playing some fantastic defense, Inferno was still scoring on them. Like they were forcing goals home. And looking at the tail of the tape here, we have M twenty two original and and Inferno. We got uh, we got a pretty even matchup here, though. Uh, Though, though we have a we have GC we have a GC three GC two and a C three versus three GCs all GC two, so mm -hmm. Inferno I think will take. Um, I can't even say that I think Inferno will take it. It's going to be a close match, and honestly, I can't decide between the two of them. I, both teams are absolutely phenomenal, and M twenty two original is definitely making a name for themselves so far. Right, I I. Uh. I think if the Inferno play like they did in tri against Tribe, they 2-0 this. I'm gonna, I, I'll go with the sweep. I think that they 2-0 it, do. but I don't think they're close. I mean, I'm mm. talking I'm talking one 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 goal games, overtime games. I'm talking really close matches, but a really, really, really close set of games in this match. But I mean, no MP2 original, you, you just can't. You just can't. You can't. You can't sleep. Well, one, you can't sleep on them. No, for sure. Absolutely and not. M22 original is definitely a solid, solid team. And honestly, they might even be underrated for, for their total MMR, in mm -hmm. my opinion. But uh, I, I would have to agree. And, and yeah. Mo Mogu is the, the new member who had brought in, who had been brought in. And um, I will say that. Oh, looks like we have ourselves a slight change. We are doing, actually doing semifinal one oh, first because okay. M2, M22 original can only make make uh make 30 so uh let's uh jump on out of this one as slight slight little uh technical difficulty here <laughs> as we move on to our other semi-final match between uh bad players and uh who else do we who, have the final we here? do not uh we have yeah we do not have bad we do not have bad players opponents yet so, uh, who, well, who do you think is going to win, N22 Alpha or A1 Squad? Alpha. Alpha? I'm very okay. confident. I'm very confident. Um, A1 Squad, I, and we haven't really seen A1 Squad on the stream, so I can't really speak to their playing capabilities. I definitely am not trying to say that they are not capable of taking some wins. But uh, M22 Alpha, oh. while they look low on the... According M1 to chat, team, A1 is winning. Oh, well, you know what? Maybe they, maybe, they, maybe they will make me eat my words. You know what? I'm always okay with that. You know, I, I, like I'll make I'll make predictions and if the team if the team makes me eat it, power to them. You Indeed. know, congratulations. Like I'm totally oh, cool. I'm totally totally cool with that. Uh but you know, kind of going back on the matches that we've had so far, okay. What do you think a like we've had what Inferno Tribe uh and seven phantoms and dragons out of the teams so far that you've seen what team has really surprised you the most the one that surprised me the most was was dragons dragons pulled off 
a fantastic upset against the S7 Phantoms. But mm. but from what I've also seen, N7 Phantoms, they have ha- they end up being upset candidates. Right. It's, it seems it seems that when teams want to make a name for themselves, one of the early teams that they do end up defeating are the N7 Phantoms, unfortunately. So, but uh, Dragons definitely surprised me. They pulled off one that's still one hell of an upset, no doubt. And they end up making it into the quarters. And unfortunately, while bad players kind of may have curb stomped them into the dirt, they uh, they still made it into the quarters. That's right. that's one hell of a performance, especially against a mainstay like N7 Phantoms. Yeah, definitely no. That's that's definitely not 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 a match to sleep on for sure. I def the dragons looked really really good, especially because we have seen them on stream and they lost to Midweast Gaming, a significantly weaker overall team. I personally think than N Seven Phantoms, but we actually do have news on our quarterfinal match that we were that we were waiting on. It does look like M Two Two Alpha did take it away, and they will be going into the semifinals against the bad players. So we're going to be getting that tail of the tape put together for you guys really quickly uh, and be moving into that. Now that you know that it's M22 Alpha versus uh, bad players, K, what do you really like? I mean, we know that bad players is a favorite, right? Oh, yeah, like, no doubt. It's pretty pretty easy. Do you think this is a sweep, though, or do you think uh, Alpha can potentially <sighs> take the game here? Uh, well, Alpha facing off against A1 squad, I would say that those those two teams are probably closer in terms of overall ability and skill. Mm-hmm. Uh, bad players is uh, bad players is, is a perennial finals op- finals member. Like yeah. they they are they are in they are in the finals matches constantly. I think they've so, made it every time they've participated in the last 7 weeks. <laughs> yeah. So uh, honestly, I think that I think bad players takes us 2-0 to be honest, because it's going to be a very, very, it's going to be a solid match. No doubt. M22 is going to put out, put out one hell of a show, but the difference between facing a one and bad players is, is an insane difference. I don't even think night and day is able to really, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like we're, 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 we're talking about completely different planets right now. Cause <laughs> bad players, is a f- probably, one of my top three, top four teams easily. Yeah. So M point two alpha needs to have a perfect game in order to fa- in order to upset bad players. And while M 22 alpha does have a team of grand champions, bad players has worked together constantly. They've been, they've made it to the finals. I've lost count of how many times and yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a very uphill battle. Honestly, I think it was, it's going to be a harder, a harder for M22 alpha to beat bad players than it would be for tribe to beat Inferno. Yeah, I definitely, I, I, I would actually a hundred percent agree. Bad players have been looking very, very, very solid in the last tournaments. Um, we do have a, a couple, just kind of a couple of fixes for this tale of the tape. Yoshi apparently is actually not playing. Uh, Brody will be playing in his spot. So that's okay. good to know. Thank you to Carbon in the chat for that. Um, I'm also trying to make sure uh, Ludwin and Jalen, I do know, are uh, mainstays for bad players. I'm not 100% certain if JJ is a consistent player or if that's just a new name. Uh, so I the real insult is playing on alt accounts. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and Jalen, that's a good thing to mention, Carbon. Jalen did say he was going to retire if they if uh, after last week's tournament, it, unless they won and they did win. But he's still here. We're going to be getting into match game one. The players went ahead and joined. They're ready to go. They're like, no, no, no. You guys can't talk anymore. We're going right in. So <laughs> I'll let you take it away, K. Our first semifinal match of the game. Here we go. Indeed, five minutes on the clock. M22 Alpha versus Bad Players. M22 is blue. Bad Players are orange. Here we go. And it looks like Bad Players taking this one early as he's, as they're pushing it into Alpha territory. But Alpha, nice midfield stop. Beautiful shot Ooh. off the top of the crossbar on a last second save by v, by by uh, VSVP, JJ. I'm just going to call him JJ now because it's going to be a little easier. But here we go. J- Pushing it forward, M22 putting on one hell of an offensive show so far. And the double tap, no, off the side. Man, if those shots were on target, we would have had ourselves an, a goal early. Unfortunately, they all clicked in off the surface into the post. 
And but here we go. Nice shot there by Nim as Nim tries to tries to put some points on the play. Throwing they're they're kind of throwing bad players off on their back foot so early on. Yeah. But absolutely. here comes Ludwin pushing it forward. Here he goes. Double tap and intercepted by Alpha as Alpha pushes it forward. Nice clear, but here comes JJ off the off the counter, off the wall, and stopped by TikTok Brody. So so that is Brody's name. And Ludwin with the shot! Saved by Fuzz. Alright, here comes JJ once again. Oh. Nice shot! Nice misdirect off the wall as he gets it past one defender and catches the other one flat-footed as bad players take a 1-0 lead with 344 left to go. Wow, what a beautiful read there by JJ off the corner. And I did have confirmed JJ is a sub for Cloud, who is normally on the bad players. So that's the sub coming in and putting in some work right away. Uh, Alpha definitely had the majority of the offensive pressure in the first minute of the game. But bad players, I mean, you can't, you cannot, you just can't rest. When you're going against this team, they they are absolutely incredible players, and they're already now here on the counter attack with the passing plays. Okay, nice play there, but off off target, oh. off the wall. Here comes JJ with the shot. No, Bloodwin with the shot, and Ludwin with the score. Beautiful pass there by Jalen as he just chips it off the wall, pinches it off the wall, and JJ with a misdirect, and Ludwin with the goal. I think JJ state JJ's presence there threw off the alpha defense, leaving Ludwin with a nice, easy shot. I 100% agree. Great communication there for the bad players, for JJ letting that to go to Ludwin. And right away, JJ going back towards passing towards Ludwin. And I mean, JJ's a sub over like for Cloud, but he looks already like he is slotting right into this team amazingly well. They have great pressure, great vision, great communication. Bad players, are, they're already coming out looking really strong. We'll see how alpha responds here, okay? Indeed, indeed. And as we get back to it, bad players keeping the offensive push going. It looked like that early burst by Alpha has has made bad players kick it into overdrive early as they take a as they now as they still have that 2-0 lead. But here they come. Here comes Alpha once again on offense, pushing it into the corner, but get, cars flying on all sides but fuzz is there midfield going for the stop but there's jalen pushing it forward once again here's the cross and stopped by nimdar as nim pushes it forward trying to get the clear himself ends up getting himself blown up for his efforts by jj jj putting in an mvp performance early on and here's the Ooh. shot and jj with the beautiful assist and jalen brings it home look at that wow. one nice little chip up off the wall and jalen getting it Past Fuzz and Nim, and now the bad players take a 3-0 lead, and we have ourselves a dominant performance so far. Yeah, great play there. A little bit of a miss touch by Fuzz. I definitely think that, uh, definitely think that potentially you you kind of need to be able to make that touch when you're playing against a team like bad players. But they immediately punish. They go for it. Nice shot by Jalen and. Patriot in the chat, I, I'm going to have to agree that I do think that the bad players may be lying a little bit with their name. It may be a little bit of fudging. They're probably not quite as bad as, as, as they say they are. <laughs> but regardless, now 4-0. Look Alpha. at that shot. Let's watch the replay right there. We got Jalen taking it the entire length of the court, chipping it up, oh. running off the wall with a beautiful wall shot right into the bottom left corner of the goal. And a 4-0 bad players lead. That could wow. be, they could be, they, they, I think they claimed this game early. And look at that one off the wall, but this time off the post on the rebound. But there is Brody with the stop. And now here comes Fuzz pushing it forward. Can, can Alpha put anything on the board? Not yet. Nice little chip pass there off the wall, but <laughs> you can't do that against bad players as they're just going to counter solidly. And here's the long cross and no. Brody with a beautiful save once again. He's making his presence on defense known. And but Fuzz making a nice midfield interception. But there's Ludwin with the block and the shot by Nimdar on the rebound. Not able to make anything out of it as VSP JJ pushing it forward into the wall for Jalen. Jalen with the cross, getting himself blown up, taking out Fuzz. A mutually assured destruction right there. But there's Ludwin with the cross and a little too much. Looks like they looks like they mishandled the ball right there. Unfortunate. And uh, here we go. Fuzz pushing forward and Jalen with the stop. And here's the shot by Nim. Saved by JJ. JJ is my MVP of the match so far. His presence has been felt on both offense and defense. That is his fourth 
save of the game. And here goes JJ once again with the trying to clear it, but there's Fuzz stopping at midair. Ball's just kind of dribbling right there. Uh, here comes Ludwin with the clear. Trying to clear it, but no, Jalen with the clear. Pushing it forward, and JJ, here's the cross. Getting it past him. Ludwin with the shot. No. Ooh, a little miscommunication there, but a nice save by Fuzz. And here, Fuzz taking control of the ball. Pushing it forward into, into bad player territory, but can he do anything with it? Here's the cross and the shot. No. Nice defense by JJ as the ball flies into the corner of bad players. And it's looking like we may have a four to nothing win. And we do. Bad players taking game one, four to nothing. Wow, and great play by the bad players. You know, Alpha definitely came out with the control for that first uh, minute of the game. And actually, looking at the shots here, it's 11 to 11. I Indeed. Don't know where that came but from. But unfortunately, it seems that all, almost all 11 of Alpha's shots came within the, the first 30 seconds. Because after that initial offensive onslaught, nothing was able to go in. Bad players look like they were caught on their back foot trying to regain some form of sanity and control. And once they got it, they never looked back. Cause yeah. because after because Alpha had one hell of an offensive onslaught, but nothing went in. And once bad players regained control of that ball, they kept the they they they, they kept the pedal down. They scored almost at will. Yeah, I mean, bad players, the the speed you can definitely see is there. You know, JJ uh, came in as, coming in as a sub for Cloud, but definitely didn't even look like it. I would agree. You know, Jalen ended up taking the MVP in the end, but I'm going to have to give it to – or uh, yeah, Jalen did take the MVP of the match uh, over JJ in the end, but I have to give it to JJ for this in, in that game. Just great on the defense, great on the offense, really good communication with, uh, with his teammates. Across the board, great play from him. But bad players, they, they're up 1-0 in this best of three series now. It's going to be M22 Alpha looking to potentially try to batch them here and take away the game to stay alive. Or we're beginning, getting in right away. Take it away, K. Okay? And here we go. Game two, M22 Alpha versus bad players. Five minutes on the clock. Here we go. And it looks like JJ taking an early tip-off win. But there's Fuzz pinching it forward. And nice midfield battle going back and forth. Who knows who's going to get the ball. But it looks like Ludwin takes control of the ball and throws it into his own territory. As the ball bounces in front of their own goal. Oh, miscommunication by Bro Brody. Ends up hitting the player instead of the ball. And... Un and a missed opportunity there for Alpha. You cannot have the so many missed opportunities against a team as good as bad players if you want to have any chance of winning. But here they go once again. M22 Alpha pushing it forward, but there's Ludwin with the defensive stop. Pushing it forward into the corner, and Fuzz making a making a reverse, reverse counter. Here goes Brody with the shot. Nice little juggle, and oh, Alpha boy. finally putting the, ball, putting the point on the board for their team. Yeah, and beautiful, right here, beautiful Alpha. play there by Alpha. Yeah, certainly. Brody, great pop there. And Alpha look up to be in control of this game so far. 420 left, the only 40 seconds by, and it's already looking very similar to game one. Let's see if Alpha can continue to keep up that pressure here against bad players, or if it will hopefully for Alpha not see a repeat of the game one uh, transfer of control that we did see, okay? Indeed, indeed. But as we saw right now, they they already are playing better this game because they have a point on the board. One of their offensive pushes finally went in. But as we see, as we're going forward, we have another midfield battle. Nimdar taking control of the ball and chipped in by the bad players. Miscommunication, but Fuzz staying with it. Keeping with the ball. Looks like he only has 50, 50 boosts left. Pushing it forward. Beers the cross. Is he going to tap it? No. He just lets... Oh, JJ ends up clearing it for his team right there. But Brody with a nice midfield interception. But there's Fuzz. Oh, missing it as the ball just bounces midfield as he chips it back to his teammate. Trying to do something on offense, but you cannot do that against bad players as all as two of them were pushing forward, keeping the ball into their into that ter into the alpha territory. But as JJ pushing it forward, there goes Nim on defense. Nice play by there. Jalen going for the shot and Nimdar with a nice aerial stop. But Ludwin midfield once again, pushing it forward, keeping it into alpha territory but fuzz making the stop pushing it pushing it into the other territory now as the ball bounces off the ceiling here comes jj Op oh, open goal oh. goal open goal and score we are now tied bad players on a beautiful shot by jj and as i as i agree with you from the previous match jj being the mvp it's looking like if the bad players take this one i would say that he's the MVP, early mvp for their team so far as well it's like he's 
Yeah, it, it's it's like he's been there the entire time. He's not he's not a sub. He's he should be a mainstay, which is how well he's playing so far. And that's a nice so aerial juggle wow, right either, there. Yeah. Uh, here comes Nimdar midfield pushing forward, and Ludwin missing it, and Nimdar Ooh. with the goal. Miss a misplay there by Ludwin. Oh. I will say, bad players, a lot more mistakes, I think, than we're used to seeing from them in this game, too. You've seen a couple double commits, some bumps in the midfield, a miss there as well. And M22 Alpha definitely taking control of it uh, right now. We do have a little bit of lag in the server, so hopefully he's, that he, he says He says it's lag, and but yeah. according to his ping, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> You never know. You never know. You never yeah, know. No, also, but look at that! Alpha taking a three to one lead. Buzz. Oh, Ludwin. look at that one! Oh, Fuzz no. with a beautiful shot there, a past Ludwin and past JJ as the ball just sneaks past all three of them and right into the right side of the goal. And Alpha taking a three to one lead and another miss. Tip off, a missed tip off there by bad players, but it looks like that was all planned as, as it kind of threw off Alpha. And the ball bouncing right in front of Alpha's goal, but there's Jalen trying for the shot and ends up shooting it into the corner. Unlucky break there for the bad players, but here comes Fuzz once again, clearing it out of his own territory, pushing it into the midfield. But Ludwin is there finally making a stop, bouncing off the wall and into the corner. But Jalen's following up. Nice cross there, and Fuzz getting spiked into the ground, and JJ trying for the play. Brody with the sh with the pass, Fuzz with the shot off the back wall. Unfortunate break there for Alpha. They should have increased their lead because they had an open goal, but no one was able to center it forward. As bad players take the shot, nice defensive stop, but beautiful offensive stop by the bad players. But the bad players keeping it going as they're going for another play. But there's Brody getting control of the ball, passing it to his teammate Nim. Nim with the shot off the back wall, but there's JJ with the stop. JJ taking it up the wall, and Fuzz getting it past Fuzz, bouncing it off the back. Here's the shot and the goal. Bad players putting another one on the board. It is now 3-2 to two Alpha versus bad players. Yeah, and JJ, that is his second nice angle there. Gets it past Brody and Nimdar, not able to really get there. A little bit too far pushed up on that back post. And right now, I think one of the biggest differences here between these two teams is it does seem like um, Alpha just doesn't seem to have a whole lot of boost. Oh, JJ. no! Three goals. That's his hat trick. He gets the hat trick off of that kickoff goal. Beautiful speed up to this ball. And, I mean, the difference to me has been the speed up into the air. JJ has been absolutely dominating there and the lack of boost. It seems like Alpha seems is almost always at a boost on their defensive side. And it's definitely contributing to the speed difference here. As Alpha is seemingly in control of the game as now... It looks the to be the momentum has shifted. Yeah. One, the momentum has absolutely shifted. Alpha needed to make that goal, but ever since that unfortunate miss it looks like it's just been nothing but bad players and the ball bounces in front of the bad players goal unfortunate break and miscommunication there let's watch what happened fuzz with a beautiful cross spiked by jj and ends up ramming into his own teammate as the ball trickles home the m22 alpha taking a 4-3 lead with one minute left to play here's our next tip off brody winning the tip off but right into the waiting arms of ludwin ludwin bounces trying to do something off the ceiling getting a pass fuzz but nimdar is there on the receive but the ball still hasn't left alpha territory as alpha tries to get the clear and does fuzz going in for the push pushing forward into into the territory but Ludwin is there with the stop knocking it away but there's Nimdar midfield Nim pushing it forward into bad players territory I keep messing up the names my goodness but nice nice midfield play there by Brody keeping it into bad player territory Nimdar nice interception and off the wall here comes Ludwin going for the aerial juggle here knocking it into alpha territory but Brody reads it the entire way making the stop knocking it into the corner and Nimdar trying for the cross Able to do so right into the hands of Fuzz. Can they score it? Nice pass, nice pass, nice play, but stopped by Jalen. Five seconds left to go. Do we see a game upset at least? Yes! Oh. Alpha taking a game from the bad players. Wow. I mean, great, great, great play there. Um, but I, honestly, 
like at the end of the day, Fuzz is the MVP. I think he he was mm-hmm. ultimately he was there a lot in the midfield. He was making a lot of plays happen. Uh, three part of three of the four goals. Um, but ultimately, this game de- this game for me came down to mistakes from bad players. I think that like we, we saw the bump on the goal line for that fourth goal for Alpha. Uh, two of the goals were open net goals that came ultimately from miscommunication and bumps and. In game one, we didn't really see the uh, the effect of JJ as a sub coming in over um, for Cloud. I think that this game two may have been a little bit more of those miscommunications that we kind of expect from a player who hasn't played as much with the team. Indeed, indeed, that that was an absolute perfect, well, almost perfect performance by Alpha. But Ludwin made some unfortunate, two unfortunate errors that both led to goals, Miss, missing missing the connection with the ball himself. So unfortunately, that cost him because. A, ma- a masterful performance by JJ, but unfortunately it was not enough as Alpha pulling off an upset for game two. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. I mean, we'll oh, see man. if they're able to keep that up in game three. They've had great pressure uh, in game. They had great pressure in the start of game one, great pressure in that game two, though it seemed to lack a- down a little bit. Let's see if they can keep that up in game three. I'm really interested to see how they managed to do this, Kate. Indeed, it's it is not a sweep. It is an app. It is a one-one series. Any team can win for sure, as has proven by Alpha. But can Alpha pull off an an insane upset? Fuzz with the shot on a six-second goal. Bad players are. They don't. I don't know what's going on with the bad players, but that was a defensive miscommunication there. As Fuzz just comes in hot and dunks it home. A great play there, Jalen, trying his best to get that save, but just there was so much power on that shot from Fuzz. Really good positioning, really good speed to get there. But the bad players are coming right out, trying to put the pressure down and even up this, even up this game. A 440 down. In the, on the clock, and already, Kay, we are seeing so much uh, speed and offense coming out from these two teams. I'm really interested to see if this turns into a shootout. No doubt, no doubt. It's going to be one hell of a game so far. Has has Alpha already takes the lead. Here comes JJ with the ball. Pushing forward. Nice little chip, but there's Brody with the save. Staying with it. Not being fooled at all. And here comes Jalen with a nice cross, but a little too much right into the hands of Nimdar. But there's JJ bouncing off the ceiling. Can they do anything out of it? No. Brody with the save. Mm. And Ludwin trying for the shot, unable to connect. And here comes, here comes JJ with the shot and scores. Just barely. He snuck that one in. Let's watch the replay on that one. Jalen off the back wall. JJ with the shot and bouncing it and goal. And, oh man, Nimdar looked, looked like he was stuck in the back of the goal on that one. And did he get bumped? I think Jalen may have gotten a piece of Nimdar there, which potentially would have uh, opened up the opportunity a little bit for JJ. But regardless, great shot from him. But Alpha right away off the kickoff, coming with that pressure. I mean, at this point, one to one, K, and these both of these teams look like they are trying their very, very best to get into the finals. Oh. Indeed, and as we say that, oh. Ludwin making a beautiful pass, and JJ. Proven his MVP status once again, bringing it home. That was a beautiful pass by Ludwin. Definitely his best play of the game so far. Right into the right into a flying JJ. Nice, nice shot there. Nice assist there by Ludwin. Yes, All right, sir. but as we continue on, here comes Brody trying to clear it, but Ludwin's there midfield. Looks like his lag has has subsided as he's making some solid connections with the ball. But here comes Alpha chipping it over the heads of the of the bad player defenders, but bouncing off the back wall, unable to make anything out of that one. But here comes Brody p- trying to s- just deflect the ball away from the bad player's offensive onslaught, pushing it forward and off into the corner. Nice stop by Nimdar. But JJ staying with it, going for the sh- going for the oh, d- yeah. triple tap. Not one, not two, three. We have three taps mid air once again. Look at that, chipping it up. One, bouncing it. Two. Oh, so two taps. My mistake. I counted the first hit as a tap. So we had a self pass to a double tap. Uh, nice the shot there by well. JJ. Yeah, great shot there. JJ already looking again, still like that MVP. He's already got his hat trick, but Alpha, oh my goodness. Oh, unlucky break there for Alpha. Oh, that's tough. But JJ already looking like, again, like another MVP candidate for this game. And ultimately for pretty much every game of the match, he is looking very solid here, okay? 
Indeed, indeed. And Brody keeping his presence known on defense, making yet another save. And Fuzz with a save as well on the rebound, but unable to make anything out of it as Brody going for the shot. No! Stopped early by stopped early by the oh. bad players. And on the counter, Ludwin with the goal! JJ with a beautiful assist, and bad players now take a four to one lead. <laughs> they they have learned. Great pass on a there by full JJ. throttle. Yeah, great pass there by JJ to get it over to the corner. Well, that was that was beautiful. And right now, bad players are just putting on the pressure halfway through this game. But Alpha. Alpha keeping right themselves away. known. Alpha keeping the presence known, keeping themselves saying, hey, this game ain't over yet. There is still two and a half minutes left to go. And th and they put another one on the board. We are now at a score of two to four. But Alpha still needs to keep that offensive going as Fuzz wins the tip off, going for the cross off the wall. But Jalen stays with it with a nice stop and a nice counter. Push it forward. Can Brody get back in time? Yes, he does. And wow. but on the rebound, Jeez. Ludwin coming back. The lag is gone, and Ludwin with the goal off off look like a pass by Brody. Brody expecting a teammate there. No, it was Ludwin, and Ludwin putting it in as we are now five to two bad players. Wow, and that's brutal there for Alpha. They had just brought it back within two goals, but I mean, bad players, they're playing lights out in this game three for sure. And already right here, JJ and Ludwin trying to get that connection. JJ is definitely an offensive monster so far. Um, Alpha, they're just going to have to come out really fast. They're going to have to be, uh, you can't, and you just can't miss touches like that if they're going to want to be able to take this uh, game three away and make this comeback happen, okay? Indeed, indeed, and that was not what they need if they want to have any swarm of a comeback. But as we say that, wow. Nimdar with a changeup, throwing the Ephus pitch, bouncing it up off into the ground, ends up just tipping it, giving it a nice little tappy, tap, 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 -roo, right into the goal as Jalen cannot get back in time. And Alpha getting their third goal of the game, but they still need two more to just tie it. And here we have Jalen bouncing it off the wall, but here comes Brody with a long shot. Ludwin with the save. That was a miraculous save there by Ludwin on a beautiful, beautiful mid-court long wall shot. Oh man, that's let's try saying that one three times fast. But as we as I say that, Brody with a nice midfield interception right into the waiting arms of JJ. JJ coming up the wall, but there's Fuzz. Right into the waiting arms of Nimdar. Nimdar bouncing into the corner, taking out Jalen. It is 2v3. Can they score it? No! Oh, Nimdar. The ball was going a little too fast as he ends up stuffing it into the post. And now he have the counterattack. Nice assist there. JJ trying to do everything he can. That was like five taps. I don't lost count now. But here we go. Bouncing it into the corner. Here comes a nice assist. Go for the shot. Jalen, no! As, as the alpha makes a nice stop. We have one minute left to play. Bad players up five to three. Here goes Fuzz with the shot. No, Jalen not being fooled this time, but there's Brody midfield. And JJ takes it right back. Here comes the aerial shot. Bouncing into the air. Here's it's floating home. And Fuzz with the stop. Bouncing it off the back wall. Here he comes. Here's the shot. And Jalen getting back in time, making the save himself. Bells bouncing in front of the bad players goal. And Brody takes the score. Wow. What a shot there. And Nimdar, a great touch. Ludwin, though, a little bit of a mistake there on the near post. Let's, it goes by, and it's immediately put away by Brody. 30 seconds left. They're down by one. They're absolutely within uh, within the realm of a chance to take this game three. As they're here goes a quick offense. Goal. Oh, my oh. goodness. They had a chance. That was oh. their chance to tie it up. As now JJ retakes control of the ball. And J J ah, Jalen, right Jalen taking the pass, but there, there are, there's Alpha making the stop, pushing it forward. Here comes Fuzz trying to go for the shot. Ten seconds left to go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and the ball still in play. No, bad players taking the series. Two games to one. Beautiful, beautiful. Last second effort there by Alpha, but unfortunately the lead was just a little bit too much as bad players take this game and thus the series. Yeah, and JJ, match MVP. In fact, MVP yeah. for every game for, for the <laughs> bad players. I mean, 
two uh, two hat tricks in game one. I think he had two goals. That's eight goals for the series. He an offensive powerhouse, and ultimately what kept them in this game. M two two alpha though, w- uh, that was close. That was way closer than we expected. It, the, if if JJ wasn't there, I think we, I think Alpha may have may have taken this one. They are definitely ranked lower than what they should be because that was an amazing performance there by M22 Alpha putting putting one of the best teams in the league on their back foots for a good portion of game of game two and three. In fact, Alpha took game two from bad players. Yeah. And while bad players may have won overall, this was a fantastic performance by M22 Alpha. Yeah, I, I would have to agree, and I'm gonna be I'm, I'm gonna be r- completely honest. Bad players, a, a lot of mistakes are coming out from them in that series. That if you're gonna be going into the finals against Inferno or M22 Original, whoever you're matching up there, that is not gonna be what you can. You're not gonna be able to get away with that against these two teams. So not at I, all. I'm not entirely sure who's gonna end up winning in this semifinal match, but I guarantee you that bad players are need to gonna need to be coming out a little bit cleaner. Unless you're JJ, if you're JJ, you just keep <laughs> banging because he that 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 dude is just crushing it. But we're gonna get Absolutely. into our second semifinal match. Great matchup there that we had there, Kay. Um, our second one's gonna be M22 Original versus Inferno. M22 Original is with a squ- a roster change that we had seen last tournament, and we definitely know that they are they have absolutely they have the firepower. The t- two old blue within this tournament so it's gonna be really interesting to see but inferno they're looking they are looking like they are on fire so far when they showed up against tribe so i'm really interested mm-hmm. to see what happens here as we get into the tail of the tape k what is kind of your thought process going into this match what do you kind of see happening here honestly m22 original is going to is probably going to put in push inferno to the breaking point mm-hmm. so while Infer- inferno is an absolute juggernaut of a team m22 original is def is, just with the performance of m22 alpha m the, the the m22 original team supposedly is better yeah. but so i'm expecting one hell of a game that's that that that's that's my prediction right now and i however i will say the mvp for the logo has to be m22 original as someone who works in media and does graphic design i, li- I like how they pulled that one off <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll leave, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that one. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, I mean, looking at this tail of the tape, though, Mogu definitely uh, kind of a, looks like a little behind, but we know that he can absolutely play up to that capability. But we're going to get into semifinal match two. The players are joining the pitch. It's going to be Inferno versus M2 2 original K7. Take it away. All right, five minutes on the clock. Here is our tip-off of game one. We have Jordan getting an early win, but we have Ty the guy. So I'm just going to be, oh, God, we have Ty the guy and Tyler. I am going to have a nightmare at this match. So already I want Inferno to win just so I'm not confused constantly. So, uh, but here we go. We have the guy pushing it forward, but almost intercepted. But the guy keeping it forward, nice little juggle. But there's Jordan with the interception. Tyler coming in, missing the ball, but right into the weight and arms of Ibo. Looks like, yeah, it looks like Ibo takes the place of one of the players of Inferno as Ibo now knocks it midfield, keeps it going. But there is, there's Tyler. Or was that Tyler or Pelletini? But Tyler coming forward in the air, making the goal himself. Nice pass by Pelletini. Pel, yep, that was Pell knocking it forward. But there's Tyler with the tap himself right into the bottom right of the goal. And M22 Original taking an early lead. Wow, beautiful pass and very great okay. shot there. A little bit of kind of ping pong play to start the first game of this match, but right away we definitely see M22 Original are looking really clean. And I will say, I think that's a sub Ibo for Neb, which is a big deal. Uh, so, I mean, it, we're going to be seeing if that uh, how that's going to be affecting this match here, okay? Indeed, indeed. And as I stand corrected, the guy's name was Peltini, not Pi. That's my mistake. My apologies. <laughs> but here comes Jordan bouncing it forward off the wall and stopped by Pell as Pell pushes it, tries to push it forward. But there's Ibo making the defensive stop. Ty the guy knocking it forward. Ty, key, Ty clearing it into Inferno territory. Bouncing it in the air. Peltini making a midfield stop. Here he goes, knocking it forward. Here's the cross, but Jordan is there to stop it for Inferno. As Inferno pushes forward, 
unable to do so, and as I stand corrected, Ibo is able to knock it clear the length of the court, but there's Pell knocking it midfield, but there's and Gator knocking it off the wall. Here's the cross and the shot off the top of the post. Ty, the guy, taking control of the ball, bouncing it off the wall. Midfield, but intercepted by intercepted by Inferno. Here off the wall, Tyler trying to make something out of it, unable to do so. Here comes Jordan over Jordan's head. Here comes Ty with the shot and Ibo with the stop. Peltini coming back, knocking it forward off the post. Ibo going for the shot off the back wall, going for the double tap. Here's the assist and Pell with the stop and the clear. Tyler coming forward, midfield, knocking it, in, knocking it into the corner himself. Here comes Jordan off the wall, but Pell's midfield. Nice, in, nice interception once again. Whew, my voice is starting to die. All right, but here we go. Ibo with trying to get control of the ball. Tyler putting his weight into the ball, keeping it from going too far forward. Right into the weight and arms of Peltini midfield. Pell with the shot and stopped by Gator. Beautiful save. Staying with it the entire way. But there's Ibo coming in midfield, going for the sh Ooh, little change up there. Off speed. Bouncing off the back wall. Is someone there to finish up? No, Jordan missing it. But Gator with the shot off the back of the wall. And none of Inferno's shots are coming anywhere close at this point. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of shots are just bouncing off the wall or the post. They need to start putting their shots on target if they want to come back and win this one. But here comes Ty the guy. Gator, nice interception there. Ibo making the interception midfield, but there's Peltini stopping it himself. Gator bouncing off the back of the back of the wall. Here's the cross and stopped by Ty the guy. And here comes Jordan trying to keep it midfield himself, but but the guy knocks it into the corner. Ibo pushing it forward and Tyler making the stop, keeping it into Inferno territory. Here comes Peltini with the shot and blocked. Unfortunate break there for the originals. But here comes Gator. Getting it past one defender, but Pel Peltini stays with it and knocks it into in, in front of Inferno's goal. But Gator's there with a cross court clear. Here's the cross, and no, and Jordan is there, but he's not able to square up the shot properly. And here comes another cross right into the weight and arms of Ibo and deflected into the corner once again. Off the wall, here's the shot, stopped by Ty the guy. Nice heads up play there by Gator, but Ty stays with it the entire way. And Tyler is now <laughs> knocking it forward into the corner and it's cleared by Inferno. But Ty, the guy regains control. A little miscommunication there by by the originals. Peltini staying staying with it, knocking it in for the cross and stopped by Gator. And here comes Ibo once again. But Ty, the guy midfield, keeping the pressure on Inferno right now. The originals, 45 seconds left to go, have a 1-0 lead. Here's the cross and the shot. As I say that, we are tied. Wow. Great pass from by Gator there to Ivo on the wall. Ivo goes up, tie the guy, not able to really get up to that. Hard to kind of judge that. Tyler going up to the back post, not able to get to it either. And one to one, 40 seconds left. I mean, but ultimately though, this game is so close here, Kay. Uh, right now, you know, Tyler, the only one with the goal on uh, or goal on the board for the originals. But as Palinti comes up, trying to get this, uh, get this offensive attack going again, uh, I, I honestly am not sure if there's going to be a goal in regulation or if we're going to make it into overtime with these two teams. Unlucky break there for Inferno right there because Gator just whiffed on that shot. But And so did Ibo. Gator and Ibo, but Gator follows through with a double tap. Nice cross there, but but it gives the M22 Originals enough time to get back on defense. But the ball's bouncing off the back wall. Jordan with the shot off the post and follow up. No! Unfortunate break there for Inferno. Two shots that should have gone home. Did not. That upper crossbar is just an absolute death knell this game as uh, as we go into overtime. And as I say it, in overtime, Tyler with the shot off target into the post. Jordan retaking control. Balls in the corner. Go for the cross. Spiking in the cross, but Peltini is there. Or Pelt... Uh, Pelinti, Pelinti, there you go, Pel. I'm just going to call him Pel for the shot. Oh. And Jordan taking it home 24 seconds into overtime. And Inferno taking a hard fought game one. Touch that? I don't know if he touched that. that I don't know so what cool. happened there, but that was a beautiful <laughs> midfield counter. And it converted into a goal. And that was only game one.
Wow. Yeah, great play coming out from M22 Original and Inferno both. M22 Original only with four shots, which is really surprising to me. I feel like they definitely had a lot more offensive pressure than that. But there were definitely some chances that they did miss. In fact, in that overtime itself, they had an open net opportunity against Inferno. So they definitely had the opportunities to make, to make that win happen. We're not able to uh, follow up with it. But in for, regardless, Inferno is going to be taking game one, two to one. And uh, we have uh, the subs again, Ibo, 426, one goal, one assist on four shots. Definitely probably my MVP for this game, despite Jordan taking the last goal in Ibo. But um, regardless, a great game one. And this is as close as we would want to see it. And honestly, about just as close as the last semifinal match was. And and and. The M22 teams, they've been coming out against some some in incredible oh. teams. Oh, I know Isneb. Okay. So that know. is Neb. There you go. Damn it, that changing is. their name to confuse us. <laughs> in mid-tournament, too. How how dare they? <laughs> what a jerk. Honest, in front of taking game one. We're going to be going into game two right away. Let's see if M22 Original can answer here, okay? Indeed, indeed. That was an absolute fantastic performance by M22, but Inferno coming on strong in like the last minute of play going into overtime and ends up taking this one. A lot of missed opportunities there by both squads, though, in my opinion. A lot of shots just clanking off the surface. But as we go into game two, Ivo, a.k.a. Neb, it goes for the shot and is unable to do so as the ball hits the post once again. Gator making the midfield, making a nice middle midfield pass, trying to tip it to his teammate, unable to do so as Jordan gets back in time. But M22 keeping it into Inferno territory, keeping the offensive pressure on. That's what exactly what they need to do if they're going to win this one. And Ivo taking it past one defender. Can they get? Can M22 get, get back in time? Yes, but the but a bad bad stop pushes it in front of their goal. But thankfully their teammates are able to make the stop themselves as Ty the guy makes another save, knocking it into the air. But Ibo, nice midfield stop, pushing it into the hands of Tyler. But Jordan is there, bouncing it off, off the wall, back and forth. Not not off the wall, off the opponent as the ball gets dead fished into the corner. Ty the, the guy trying to do something with it ends up getting blown up for his efforts as Gator gets back in time, making the stop. Tyler trying to push it forward, unable to do so as Gator now tries for the clear. But nice midfield stop by Ty the guy. Unable to, but nothing is able to come out of this one as the ball is just going back and forth inside Inferno territory. Trying to make the clear, but Pell makes a nice midfield interception. Can they do anything out of this one? No, Gator makes the clear. Tyler getting back in time, taking control of the ball, doing a little juggle, getting it past two defenders into the hands of Pell. Can Pell make the goal? No, he changes it up and tie the guy unable to make the shot as Gator gets in the way. Beautiful stop by Gator. As Pell goes for the midfield interception, good for the cross. Unable to make anything out of this. A little bit too much on that rebound as it gets past Ty the guy. Jordan retaking control, coming back, and Tyler stopping it into the corner. As Gator flying in the air, unable to connect it. There's a couple missed shots that you don't usually see from Inferno, but the ball's floating in front of the, the M22 goal. Nothing is coming of it as a lot of saves just all three of them are in the goal, making the stops, making the saves, preventing anything from going in. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, M22 original, great defense so far, but there definitely have been some miscues. I think Inferno has a couple of missed opportunities. But regardless, I mean, we're going to be we're moving into the 230-minute mark of this game halfway through no goals being scored and is a this is my final match just as close as the last one but a completely different story and play style between the two teams so much more defense and less goals coming out and i think ultimately it comes down to just kind of a lack of conversion on some offensive opportunities that both of these teams have had so Indeed. i think ultimately it's going to come down to whoever is the most consistent whoever's going to shore up some of those mistakes and be a little bit more consistent with their uh offensive opportunities that they get, get that they do end up getting no doubt, no doubt. But as I say, as we say that, the oh, ball, the momentum of the ball. He ends up hitting the opponent. Let's watch what happens. Ty the guy making a beautiful midfield shot. But instead of double tapping the ball, oh. he double taps Jordan as the ball's momentum just carries it home. That was a beautiful, beautiful play there by Ty. Wow. I mean, 
I mean, that goal, goal number one, great, great play there. I think a little bit of, uh, you know, not quite what he probably was going for going into it. But regardless, goal number one go, does go to M22 original, just like it did do in game one. We're going to see if Inferno is able to respond to this like they did in uh, that first game here, okay? Oh, beautiful shot there by Gator as he knocks it in front of the M22 goal. Yep. And Jordan brings it home, and we are tied once again. Oh, my gosh. After a b insane defensive battle for the first two-thirds of the match, once that two-minute mark hit, the goals have been raining down. We have two goals within 30 seconds. As I just yeah, spill over my not screen. quite enough boost there to get up there off of the backboard, and it does get scored in right away. Jordan's going to be coming off of the kickoff. He has to... Doesn't have the boost to really get to it, but I mean, M22 original, they look a little bit confused. Everybody going up for the ball, the rotation's not quite there for defense, and I definitely think that that's going to be potentially hurting them if they, uh, if Inferno are able to cut on those mistakes here, okay? No doubt, no doubt. It, it looks like that goal kind of threw them all off, as oh, in they no. don't really know what's going on, and a beautiful midfield interception conversion to a goal by Ibo. What? Wow. Let's watch what happens there. Ty, the guy trying to get it past him. Ibo not being fooled, putting himself in the exact perfect position and scores it, giving Inferno a late lead. Oh, my gosh. And here we go. Once again, minute left to play. Ty, the guy taking control of the ball midfield, trying for the shot, but Ibo not being fooled. Neb staying with the ball as Jordan comes back, makes another stop, bouncing off the wall himself. Ibo knocking it into the corner, going for the cross. Ball's floating in the air. Can Gator make anything out of it? Bouncing off the back wall. And Jordan missing the shot because... A beautiful, beautiful defensive play by Tyler. Staying with the ball. And Tyler coming coming with it. But Gator making a midfield stop. Bounced it in front of the goal. Can they score it? No. Pell gets back in time. Making the save. Not letting the ball just roll right in. But we have 30 seconds left to go. Inferno with a 2-1 lead. Here's the shot. And stopped once again by Pell. Can M22 do anything with this one? Oh. Ball's bouncing off the back wall. Nice shot there, but just a little off as the crossbar takes control. And here comes Tyler bouncing it once again. And the shot. No one is back, but it is off target. Unlucky break there by Inferno, but they already have the lead. Miscommunication by M22. And the ball gets bounced off the wall. And oh. goal. Just to put an exclamation point on this series, Inferno taking a 3-1 lead with zero seconds left to go. That is your game. Inferno taking a 2-0 series win. Wow. And, I mean, at, at the end of the day, you know, again, Ibo taking our, uh, I think, in my personal opinion, Ibo yeah. is taking the <laughs> game MVP or in the match MVP as well. And uh, Ibo being Neb, that means two in a row that he has taken for the Inferno squad. So we're going to be going into an Inferno versus bad players uh, matchup. But before we go there, okay, I, honestly, M22 Original and M22 Alpha, both of the M22 squads, great showings from both Indeed. of them. Both, both of them made the semifinals. And while, yes, they did, they neither of them advanced, They bo both those teams faced probably two of our best two of slips best squads a lot yeah. of s's in that one yeah. but uh yeah so uh as we as we see we do have an inferno versus bad players final once again but full credit for m22 originals they had a defensive battle for that entire series but inferno just getting that final tick in and getting getting the win yeah, and that's the difference between the I think the two the two sets of teams, right? With uh, bad players in Inferno, they just have that that you know that push that finish the, to finish the game. Alpha and Original both um, came out with different styles of play. Alpha a little bit more offensive heavy, Original a little bit more defensive uh, de defensive oriented, and it's just the consistency to finish the game wasn't quite there. But regardless. Great matches from both of them. A great set of semifinal uh, matches as well. And we will be going into the finals. Bad player versus Inferno. We've seen this matchup before on Slips. We know what it goes. Both of these teams are just absolute, like, I mean, they are Slips staples. And not just staples as in they return over and over again. But they are finals veterans. When Indeed. we're looking at these two teams here, going into what's a best of five final series... I mean, wh wh who do you think? First off, who do you think is going to take it? They are one-one currently in recent times, um, and 
at the end of the day, if for whoever you don't think is going to take it, what do you think they need to do to potentially uh, make that that win? Uh, well, well, honestly, th- th- honestly, they, honestly, I think that they that they need to take take uh, take some uh, plays from each other's book. Mm-hmm. So it's like they, they they need to they need to mark the, the they need to mark who they want who they think is going to be their MVP. They need to shut down their opponents because if a mistake happens, it's it's gonna it's going to lead to goals. And while a lot of the shots ended up crashing against the crossbar in the M twenty two versus Inferno match, it's a, it, we have ourselves. It is a new series, different mm-hmm. opponents, different series. We could have ourselves a gold again, or we could have ourselves another defensive, defensive slog. Right. So honestly, it's going to have to be. I think whoever draws first blood is going to end up winning the match, but it's going to be a close one. Gotcha. And as we do get into the tail of the tape, uh, you know, Gator Jordan Neb versus Jalen JJ and Ludwin. I, I do not think that these ranks are full. Is JJ champ three? There's no way he's champ three. And we are actually gonna we are gonna get a remake a lobby remake real quick. I think a player unfortunately accidentally did join. But while Oops. we get into that, um, I, I mean between Inferno bad players, Inferno swept bad players uh, several t- several weeks ago. Bad players came back uh, last week and and got the revenge story going forward. So we're one one in the last uh, couple weeks between these two teams. Honestly, it, for me, I think Inferno just looked cleaner. This tournament, I think yeah. right. I think less mistakes have been coming out of them, uh, in the in the in the stream matches that we saw. Uh, I think that's ultimately going to be uh, the difference maker for me. Uh, and JJ is a, again a sub. They bad players <sighs> beat Inferno with Cloud, mm-hmm. and so I do think that that will be a factor when we move. No into doubt, this. no doubt at all. And JJ has been playing like an absolute MVP. Yeah, like he it, like. In the match that we saw against against uh, M22 Alpha, while Alpha is may not be as high ranked as Originals, and they still did take a match from bad players, the the ability of JJ, well JJ's ability to essentially just take absolute control of a match, it's it's going to be a certain factor. So Inferno, if they want if they want to take take the rubber the rubber match in their final series against bad players, they will need to shut down JJ. Yeah. And that, and not not to take away any credit from Jalen and Ludwin because both of them are absolute monsters. And JJ is JJ has been shown this tournament to be the absolute uh, to to essentially carry the team to victory, even as a sub. It's it, it's you can't even tell that he's a sub. It's yeah. like he's been there the entire time. I definitely agree, though I will say that some of the rotational miscues I I, I do personally think will put, uh, potentially come from the the kind of communication gaps mm-hmm. that may be happening. That uh, so bringing in a sub comes in, but I mean he's shown that he's such a good player that you're right. We, you don't really see the difference as much as you normally would for any other sub. But um, we're, let's let's take a look at the bracket real quick as we do wait for the final player uh, to join this lobby. And then let's kind of see how we got here. We had definitely had some interesting um, uh, matches that occurred, a couple upsets, some forfeits that were a little bit unfortunate. Mm-hmm. As we see, you do see, yeah, uh-huh, at the top of the bracket, a, a forfeited match that was going to – Ultimately, a tournament favorite. You know, we have Blue taking the win over Kinetic, but then gets beat out by M22 Original – um, and I do. I think. I think the players are ready for me to stop talking because we are going to get into the finals match. They join up right away. Uh, it's going to be Inferno versus Bad Players for the finals. Ah, this is going to be tough. I'm really excited to see what happens here, K. As we get into the countdown. I agree. I agree. But five minutes on the clock. Game one of the finals. Here we go. Gator knocking it off the wall, but right into the hands of Neb. But JJ staying back, staying with it. Beautiful save on Champions Field. JJ taking control, knocking it off the wall, getting it past one defender, but cannot get it past two as the ball gets bounced right back into bad player territory. Bad players bouncing it off the wall once again. JJ getting the ball up the wall. Here comes the cross and the shot. 
missed Ooh. by Ludwin. Well, is that lag once again? I don't know. But Jalen <laughs> with a nice midfield counter shot. But Gator with the – was it Gator? Yes, it was Gator with the save as the ball goes bouncing back into bad player territory. Here comes it is spiking up into the air. Ibo not able to finish it off. And Ludwin trying to do something with it. Nope, ball gets set to Gator off the post. Unfortunate break there, but there's Jordan bouncing off the back wall once again. Can they do anything out of it? No, Ludwin clears it for his team. And Jalen unable to make the juggle as he's getting beaten up by Ibo. Ibo then getting the steal himself. Bouncing it into the wall. Ludwin midfield into the hands of Jordan. Jordan bouncing off the wall with him. I keep saying that over and over again. Jordan into the hands of Ibo. Ibo with the shot. JJ with the save. Beautiful save there. I thought that was going in. JJ once again getting back on defense. He is an absolute monster this this tournament. And another shot by Gator. This time saved by JJ. Or no, by Jalen. And Gator with the shot off the crossbar into the hands of the bad players. Bad players knocking it into Inferno territory. Taking control. Trying to do anything with it. Oh. Miscommunication. As, as they end up taking each other out. Gator regaining control. Can they do anything with this double tap in the corner? No. Gator trying for a set, unable to do so as Jalen takes control of the ball. And Ibo making a save. Nice. Beautiful save there. Gator with like a quintuple tap. I don't know how many there. <laughs> JJ with the shot. Going for the jungle. Getting it past one defender. Not two as Ibo makes the save. We have ourselves a defensive battle. A lot of offense going on, but the defense is holding strong on both teams. Who is going to be the first to break? We will see as we keep going. Ibo unable to do anything with that one as Jordan ends up taking control. Ludwin with a nice intercept. Bouncing it into the wall, keeping it into Inferno territory. But Ibo taking control of the ball up the wall into bad players. Jalen knocking it midfield. And Jordan with the shot. Stopped by Ludwin. Nice stop there. Ludwin taking control. Can they get back in time? No! Ludwin with the midfield goal. Wow. I mean, great shot there from Ludwin. Saw the open net opportunity. All three players up for Inferno. Not able to really get back in time. 227 right after the halfway mark did hit. We do get our first goal of the final series, and it's in favor of bad players. And right now, honestly, like no team really has solid control over this game quite yet. It's going to be really interesting to see how Inferno try to answer this first goal. Uh, I, I, right away, they get into the offensive half of bad players. And Kay, I definitely think that the speed of both of these teams is, I mean, they're both in the zone right now. I mean, they're fast, they're stealing, like you see a boost here right there, demos coming through, passes being made, and the defense is just locked down. It is. It is an absolute defensive slog right now, but some beautiful plays there by both squads. This time, though, Ibo getting it, trying to get midfield past Jalen, but Jalen saying otherwise. But Gator coming in strong, bouncing forward. Here's the cross. Nice little tip, but Jalen staying with it. Jordan, though, coming back. Another cross and stopped by JJ. His presence will not be denied. Ludwin coming in with a shot. Jalen, or no, JJ trying to do a misdirect, unable to do so, and ends up throwing him off. Here's a long shot there by Inferno stopped by JJ once again as Gator coming back trying to do it himself. Jordan though clearing it into the corner in, right in front of Ibo Ludwin though coming on hot going for the double tap trying to make the assist Falls just floating in front of, their front of the Inferno goal but cleared by Inferno and Jalen coming in midfield, bouncing off the wall. Here's the shot by Ludwin Ooh. and stopped by Ibo. Beautiful stop. And here comes Gator, knocking it into the corner. Gator bouncing forward. Here's the cross and the shot not on target. Jordan with a shot, but unfortunately goes just to the outside. And Gator now coming in midfield. Nice long shot and stopped by Jalen. They are their defense rotations have been on point. But as I say that, Jordan coming in from midfield. Aerial double tap off the wall. Off the wall. One, two, home. Go for Inferno. And we are tied with 42 seconds left to go. Great play by Jordan there to answer the goal from bad players and tie it up with 42 seconds remaining. And right away off the kickoff, they're trying to get onto offense here to potentially not have it go into overtime. An overtime game one would be really interesting to see. And I do think that a win in that overtime would be huge for the momentum of either team. But right away, we see how close this match is, Kay. And I, I, I mean, at this point, both of these teams look like they could take it here. 
Oh, beautiful juggle there by Jalen. But Inferno end up swarming him and takes it out. But here we go. Yes, I do need to know the terminology better. I will admit that. <laughs> but here we go. Jalen knocking it forward. Ludwin with a nice clear. Trying to do something. Trying to keep it from going to overtime. Jordan with a midfield shot. Going off the wall. And oh, nice heads wow. up play by Ludwin. Knocking him out of the shot. And we are going to overtime. Wow. All right, here we go. In overtime, 0-0 zero, zero, zero in overtime. 1-1 one, one is the score. Ibo taking the ball, trying to get it out of their own territory. Jordan with the clear, knocking it forward, but Jalen with a nice midfield shot. Here comes Gator, knocking it into the corner once again, going for the cross, and no, stopped by Ludwin. And But Jordan midfield, here's the shot off target. And... Nice interception there by Ibo, bouncing it off the wall. And JJ with a nice stop. Can, but can bad players keep it going? No, ball's bouncing midfield. We have ourselves a midfield battle. Ibo going up for the shot, but Jalen is there first. Ibo, Gator, Jalen, I don't know who has the ball, but is back midfield. Jalen taking control. Almost open goal. Can they do anything of it? Ludwin just misses the misdirect. And JJ knocking it forward up into the air. Here's the floater. Just a little too much as Ibo takes control. But there's Ludwin with the play. No. Jordan trying to get past everyone. But JJ is there with the midfield stop. Here he comes. Ludwin with the long shot. But Jordan with the intercept. And JJ with the save. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. He is... JJ is an absolute monster this game, but there's Jordan with the shot off the crossbar. Gator with the rebound. No, Ludwin making the save. Ludwin taking control and stopped by Jordan, but here's a shot by Jalen and Gator with the save. Back and forth, save after save after save. This is an absolute defensive battle. Minute 30 into overtime, balls midfield, Jalen taking control, going for the floater, here's the shot, and Gator making the stop, getting it past JJ, Ludwin getting back in time, yes, but here comes Gator going for the misdirect, nice little floater shot, but JJ is not fooled, but getting it past Gator, nice shot by Ludwin, trying to get it past, but Ibo's midfield, getting it, trying to get it himself, balls bouncing off the ceiling, here's the shot by Jordan, off the back of the wall, Gator with the rebound, missing it, no! Yes, no, no, saved by the bad players. Bad players trying to take control. Jordan getting control of the ball, though. Knocking to midfield, but there's the intercepting shot, and Ipo with the save. Jalen taking out his frustration by nuking Gator into oblivion. And here we go, midfield balls once again. Jalen trying to get control of the ball, but there's Jordan keeping it into bad players' territory, but Jalen's trying to clear it gator getting control into the corner here comes ludwin trying to clear it no jordan making the stop but ball gets past him ibo ends up making the save him making the stop himself as the ball gets bounced into the corner and the shot off the post and the rebound and bad players take game one incredible pass by ludwin and then a, a shot by jalen into the demo onto jordan and jj is able to put it in on open net ibo not able to rotate back in time and get there and that's an overtime win for bad players a really long one there but ultimately great offensive plays coming out from both these teams and the defense was just so solid for both of those teams you can see so many actually 11 shots from both teams seven saves from the inferno team and six from bad players i mean incredible incredible play here by both of these teams and it, it is just it's just a defensive showdown right now and that was you know, an insane match. Yeah. I mean, right now, both of these teams are just trying their best to hold out. It's almost like your voice, I think, K7. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. My <laughs> voice is, is holding out as long as it can. And it's got to because we got ourselves a best of five series in a finals between two in incredible teams and while bad players did take this one this was an absolute defensive showcase by both teams four saves by ibo three saves by gator three saves by jj two by jalen and one by ludwin it was who it's it was whichever wall was gonna crack first and unfortunately for inferno their defense in overtime just barely cracked on that demo they had to literally force that one to go in because because th their defender was there, but that demo took them out, mm -hmm. leaving them with an open goal for a perfectly timed shot. And bad players take a 1-0 series lead going into game two. And five minutes on the clock. All players are in. Here we go. Bad players versus Inferno. Finals. Game two. 
and Ludwin getting the control of the ball after the tip up, knocking it into Inferno territory. But Ibo getting control of the ball. But here comes JJ. Beautiful cross, but Gator is there. Nice read by Gator, but unfortunately he is unable to make the double tap. And Ludwin going in the air himself, knocking it forward. Jalen getting control and chipping it forward, but a little too slow. Ibo making the save. Gator, though, nice midfield cross. Jordan, though, unable to connect. Jalen, though, knocking it into Inferno territory. Once again, Ibo trying to make the save and the stop. He does, but Ludwin is there midfield. JJ getting control. Balls bouncing midfield. Jordan gets control, knocking it into territory and gets bumped out of the way of that shot. Beautiful defensive play there by bad players. It's not just stopping the ball. They're hitting the players out of the shots. But there's Ludwin making a beautiful save once again. He is on fire this game with the defense. Putting himself yeah. into every play. Certainly. But and the physical play is definitely going to be what does be, and it ends up being the differentiator here. And a defensive showdown, you, physical play is ultimately what's going to open up those slots. But Jalen, from a pass... From, I, I mean, I can't even. So who made that pass? It looks like that was a beautiful pass by JJ. Ludwin. Midfield interception into the hands of wow. JJ, who makes the pass to Jalen. That was a double assist, in my opinion. They really need to start keeping track of of <laughs> assists hockey. like that. Yeah, exactly, like hockey. Yeah, no but physical nice play there. Nice little dead fish play, there. Though. Tip off Ivo pushing it forward into bad players' territory. Players have that 1-0 lead, so Inferno needs to come in hot with their offense. And the shot, and as I say that, beautiful pass by Jordan. Off the, was that off the ceiling? Jordan off the wall, bouncing into the corner, and Ibo make it a perfect pinpoint finish. That was probably the one of the best passes and shots I've seen this thus far in the series. Great pass there by Jordan, and right away we see, you know, a defensive showdown last game in game one, but a 3.30 in this game remaining, and already two goals have gone down. So it's definitely, they're definitely coming out with a lot more offense here, and uh, well, I'm, I'm really interested to see if that does continue with this game too. We're at one-to-one -one with 3.15 remaining here, okay? No doubt, no doubt, but here comes Ludwin midfield once again, but Jordan making the aerial, sh aerial block right into the hands of Ibo. Ibo's knocking it forward over the heads of one up off the wall here's the little cross little too much as the ball flies over but a beautiful assist by gator but all three of the bad players make the stop there and ludwin coming in midfield knocking it into inferno territory off the wall and jj mistimed it just ever so slightly as the ball bounces into the hands of jordan jordan going for the shot but ludwin coming out of nowhere with a midfield aerial block and jalen pushing it forward ball gets pat ball gets Blocked and deflected past the defensive line of the bad players. Oh. Here's the cross and JJ making the save or making the stop. Not counted as a save though. Go figure. And a nice little rebound play. Ludwin though. Miss Ludwin deflecting the ball into the hands of JJ. JJ ends up getting himself deflected out of the play as Jordan makes the save. Beautiful, beautiful defense there. And uh, here we go once again. Ball's bouncing off the ceiling into the sh shot, and JJ getting getting the play and making the save. Beautiful shot there by Jordan. And Ludwin coming in hot, knocking it off the wall. Here comes the sh play, and Jordan making the stop. Back and back and bouncing for the ball is bouncing back and forth once again. And a beautiful save by Ludwin. That is his third save of the game. He is my current defensive MVP so far. And Jalen trying to for the shot, and all of Inferno gets back in time on that one. But Ludwin is there once again, midfield, going for the defensive, going for the intercept, unable to make a play out of that one, but gets back in time for a defensive stop once again. But Gator coming in hot, knocking it off the wall and into the hands of Jordan. Jordan bouncing it up off the wall, but a little bit too much as the ball bounces into the corner now. Ivo then taking control. Here comes the cross and stopped by Jalen. Beautiful play there. Jalen taking control, knocking it into the air. Nice little juggle, but Gator is not fooled as he bounces the ball into the wall, into the hands of Ibo. Ibo knocking it forward into the hands of Jalen. Jalen and Ibo back and forth. Nice little nice little pinch up into the wall. That 1-1 score is still holding strong. Minute left to go as Jordan pushes the ball to the corner. Here comes the shot by Gator. Open goal score. Inferno taking a 2-1 lead.
Yeah, really dangerous challenge there by, um, it looks like JJ. Actually, Jalen was behind him and moved up a little bit too far. Not able to get back to the back post in time. Gator takes it from off of Jordan's hands. A great passing play there. One to two in favor of Inferno. And right away, 53 seconds remaining. We're going to have to see bad players potentially try to bring this back with a little bit more of, um, offensive passing plays that we had seen from them uh, in the early portions of the game here, okay? Uh, no doubt, no doubt whatsoever there. Beautiful pass play there, going for a shot, but Ibo making the stop. But there's Ludwin midfield once again, but Gators taking it right back as the ball goes into bad player territory, bouncing back and forth midfield. Here goes JJ with the shot and blocked by his own teammate. Miscommunication, actually I wouldn't say that was a miscommunication, but that was gravity, gravity being the MVP of that play. Unfortunate for the bad players right there. And here comes JJ with the, the with the play, but Gator making the stop midfield. Inferno, 2-1 with 10 seconds left to go. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And the ball still alive, floating in the air. JJ staying with the ball. Here's a nice little float play off the post and game. Inferno taking this one. 2-1 on the unfortunate, unfortunate block. I was, I'm not sure that was miscommunication or just gravity being a nightmare, but what do you, what happened there? Uh, it looks like a little bit of uh, ran out of boost there for Jalen, not able to really do anything to get out of the way. JJ go, looked uh, to go take a shot at it, but it didn't really see uh, Jalen following, falling from the sky there. And on uh, just kind of, I think a little bit unfortunate uh, situation, but regardless, we have another two, one, but it is in favor of Inferno this time without the long overtime attached to it. And Indeed. I mean, at this point, both of these teams are just uh, just going crazy. I think Jordan, for me, MVP of this game, two assists, was a part of a ton of the plays. The saves uh, like had a really good defensive uh, presence in the game as well. Was a part of a lot of the bumping plays as well. I think that's a big deal because mm -hmm. against bad players, you can't like they have their rotations are so clean and so crisp, but you can't really get them thrown off unless you kind of take them out of the rotation so going into game three we're really looking to see if inferno can continue what they start in game two or if bad players are going to bring it back but ultimately close series I, I mean i could see this going all the way to game five k I certainly can too, but right now we and we do have ourselves a tied series, so we are at the very least getting a game four out of this one. So uh, here we go, game two, bad players versus Inferno. Game uh, correction, game three, bad players versus Inferno. Here we go, five minutes on the clock, and uh, Inferno with an early offensive push there, but JJ making the interception, but Ibo getting control of the ball midfield, pushing it forward. Ludwin though with the intercept, beautiful shot, but Gator gets there just in time because that one was gonna float right in if that was untouched that was a beautiful beautiful play there by gator on a nice shot by ludwin but here we go inferno on the offense once again ludwin making this making the stop nice intercept shot once again but the ball gets past them both on offense as gator then misses his shot i think that was a little misdirection there but ludwin with a nice little pinch up into the ceiling jalen off the wall going for the shot and i ibo Ibo making the interception, but Jalen trying to pinch it in, and Jordan with the save. Nice play there by Jordan, as unfortunately for them, they are unable to clear it as JJ and Gator back and forth. Ball's midfield. Everyone's flying in the air. <laughs> Ibo taking control of the ball, going for the shot off target into the corner. Ludwin, though, getting a little pinch into the into the field, trying for the clear. Unable to do so as Gator makes the stop. Ibo, though, coming in, another little pinch into the ceiling. Jordan getting it up into the air. <laughs> the ball's just floating midfield. No one's really getting any clean shot out of this one. But Jordan trying to go for it. A little too much on that cross as it flies into the corner. Ibo, though, knocking it into the ceiling. Jalen, though, knocking it himself. Ball's getting pushed into Inferno territory now as Gator waits for the ball on the receipt. But there's Ludwin with another aerial interception into cross court into the wall. Jordan, though, getting control. Ball's floating into the goal, and Jalen makes a stop. But Ido with a beautiful, beautiful intercept shot. Unfortunate for him, though. It was off target, but that rebound is also off target. <laughs> and Ibo keeping it going forward as the ball flies, floats, open. Oh, no, Jalen with the last second save. Beautiful, beautiful play there. 
Oh, the defense going strong for the bad players as they're stopping every goal on every shot. Nice play there, but Gator trying for a misdirect ends up punting it into the corner. But Jordan with the shot and saved by JJ. We have ourselves another defensive onslaught. Or I wouldn't say defensive onslaught. Another pair of absolute walls on defense. And Ludwin with another midfield interception, trying to keep the ball into Inferno territory. Ivo getting control, making the clear. Ludwin, though, getting back on defense on time, bouncing up off the wall. Here comes Ivo with the shot, not on target. But there's Jordan on the rebound, bouncing forward. JJ with the save. Gator going up, go for a dunk. Not able to do so as Ludwin makes this save. But Ivo staying with the ball, keeping with the rotation going. Jordan, I Ivo to Jordan, to Ludwig, or to Ludwin, to Gator. Back and forth into the corner once again. Ivo with the shot, Jalen with the stop, knocking it into the air. It's floating Gator back on defense, making the play. But Ludwin with the interception, getting the pass. Gator, Gator, Gator getting back on time. Here comes JJ with the shot off target. Jalen and Jordan pitching it into the corner. Gator, though, coming in strong, coming off the air, going for the jungle, unable to do so as Ludwin makes the interception. Ivo, though, getting back on defense on time. But here comes Ludwin with the cross, Ivo with the stop. That was a beautiful, beautiful play there by all oh. teams. And uh, Gator off the back of the wall with the dunk and goal. Inferno taking a 1-0 lead with a minute 30 left to play. Look at that deep. Look at that play right there. Off the back wall on a just missed defensive play there by JJ. Staying with it and scoring. Wow, what a play by Gator there. A great double tap to take the first goal of this game three. And it's just a testament to how strong these defenses have been, especially bad players. Inferno, a huge amount of Let's offensive see. control for this game. But the bad players have been there to make save after save after save. And ultimately, it, it came down to Gator just having to make an incredible clip-like play to put it down. But right away, Inferno's coming in and a pass off Jordan to Gator. And Gator takes the second goal. And it's opened up at this point. Bad play. They need to get something. They need to get it out of their half. Inferno have kind of found their sweet spot here. And they took two goals and, I mean, no goals for four minutes. And then back to back, like, right away at the last minute and 20. In the last 30 seconds. Two. Yeah. The last minute, last 30 seconds. This has been an absolute... Mirror, this is this has been exactly what Inferno wanted. Get some good counters, get some accurate shots, putting it home. This is exactly what they need in order to take out bad players. But as we say that, bad players start putting some offense of their own as JJ going for the shot, but met in the air by Ibo. They are doing a fantastic job keeping his shots in check. And it looks like Debu lost connection, so uh-oh, that's not good. But here we go as we continue on. Jordan pushing it forward, unable to do so, but Ivo on the rebound and off the top of the post. Beautiful, beautiful stop there by the by the bad players, keeping the score as is. But on the counter, we got ourselves another pinch across the court as into the waiting arms of Ludwin. Ludwin going for the shot, not able to do so as he's intercepting midway. Here comes JJ with another play trying to do anything with it unable to do so as jordan makes the stop here comes gator with the shot and no stopped by the bad players but the offense continues on as the ball stays into bad player territory and it looks like inferno is taking this one with a score of three to nothing on a beautiful beautiful end of end of game shot by jordan bouncing it off the off the opponent and finishing it up himself Inferno taking game three, three to nothing. And that's 2-1 now for Inferno up in the series. That game was a lot more decisive than we had had in games one and, one and two. I mean, 14 shots to three for Inferno's mm -hmm. favor. And for me, Gator, absolute MVP of that game. Jordan was a big part of everything as well. Um, Ibo kind of really playing that solid third man role. But Gator just, he cracked it open with the double tap. tap an incredible, incredible shot against what has been a uh, lights out bad players defense. And at the end of the day, though, he, he cracked it open and immediately they they were able to move forward and were able to start getting uh, goal after goal to follow. Uh, but 3-0 for Inferno in game three. And honestly, they just look right now like the faster and more consistently solid team, in my opinion. Bad players incredible play by them incredible defensive play but unfortunately against inferno you just you, you can't you can't play on, on the back foot you have to go into the midfield and take control of it 
absolutely, absolutely. For for the first three minutes of that match, we had ourselves one hell of a defensive battle. Bad players making save after save after save. But when you're taking 14 shots, eventually something's got to go in. They needed to clear that ball. They were unable to do so with some fantastic midfield control play by Inferno. But here we are, game four, five minutes on the clock. Inferno versus bad players, game four. Inferno up two games to one. And here we go. Gator taking control of the ball mid in the air midfield. Ball's bouncing forward. Ibo, nice little cross there. Jordan trying for the shot is met in the air by the bad players. And un nothing coming out of that one. But Ibo midfield once again with oh. the control. Gator going for a finesse dunk right there. <laughs> but unfortunately mistimes it and it misses it. Uh, Neb is Ibo. Neb is Ibo, Croc. He switched so, uh, but here we go once again. Jordan with a beautiful save off a shot by JJ. Inferno's doing all they can to keep JJ in check because he is trying to carry as best he can. Gators can't control the ball, unable to unable to center it. But Ibo, Ibo's able to center it. Jordan going for the shot. Nice little misdirect, but Jalen, beautiful read on that one, making the epic save. Ball's bouncing off the wall. Gator unable to connect. Jordan with the shot and Jordan with the goal. Beautiful play there by Jordan and putting Inferno up in a decisive game four, one to nothing. And great bump there by Gator. Got a little bit of a tap onto JJ in the net. Was definitely definitely threw uh, JJ off in the defense right there and allowed uh, a nice shot to come out from Jordan right away. Inferno take the 1-0 victory. And again, it seems to be mostly on the bad player's side. The bad players have to find a way to get these clears out. Oh my goodness, I thought he was about to do that. That would have been insane. Indeed. But the Indeed, bad players that was have a to find a way to get these clears. Yeah, I mean, right now they're just on the back foot, and and they 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 have they can't even get offensive opportunities off of counters. It's just been so solid from Inferno here. Inferno's offense is absolutely clicking at the perfect time, exactly when they need it. But we have gotten used to seeing that from Inferno thus far, and oh, beautiful demo by J by Jalen on Ibo, trying to give them trying to give some sort of interrupt to whatever momentum Inferno has right now because that's over the past two games that's three unanswered goals so far but mm -hmm. as we continue on JJ trying to push it forward into Inferno territory but Ibo is there countering it with a beautiful long cross court shot saved by Ludwig and Inferno keeping the offensive pressure on as Jalen tries to clear it right into the arms of JJ. JJ keeping it in the air, but there's Jordan coming out hot, flying in the air, knocking it into bad player territory. And Gator following up, keeping it into that territory as Jordan gets back on rotation. Oh. And Gator with the shot off his own pass. None of the bad players were able to get back in time. Looks like JJ got intercepted. Jalen couldn't get back in time. No one was back as Gator just taps it in and gives Inferno a 2-0 lead into yeah, game four. Great play there by Gator. Um, Jalen, though, just a little bit unfortunate. It was creeping up on the back post and wasn't there to make the play. Uh, I mean, ultimately a good finish by Gator, but it comes down to the mistakes from bad players right now on defense. You're already on your defensive back foot. You can't make those type of rotational errors against a team like Inferno. They're going to punish you, and you just saw that. So 220 Oh, about remaining in this game. 2-0 for Inferno, and bad players need to win this game if they want to send it to Game 5 and survive in this series so far. I, 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 I don't know if they're going to be able to make this happen, Kay. They are going to need to pull out something out of their asses for to win this one, because looks like none of their offense is, is holding true. They have been unable to really clear the ball, because every single time they do, there is an Inferno player midfield. But here we go, on an offensive push, but right Right into the hands of Ibo. Gator okay. taking out JJ. No one's back. Can they score another one? They do. Ibo with the goal. Just pushing it forward from the cross court. Getting it past both Ludwin and Jalen. And JJ was off into the unknown because he got demoed. No one was there. Open goal. Cross court. Ibo. And Great Inferno taking Gator. a 3-0 lead. Yeah, great play by Gator there again with the bump of uh, the demo onto JJ. That was that he, 
Gators scored that goal. I both good like it's it's always hard to <laughs> confirm an open net, but at the end of the day, Gator with his physical play has really mm. been changing the shape of what uh, bad players' defense is looking like, and it, it's Indeed. been it's had a major major impact right now. So uh, bad players, I mean, minute twenty remaining, you're down by three. You haven't had really any legit that many legitimate offensive opportunities other than a couple in this game. They've got to make something else has got to happen here if they want to come back in this in this uh, game. Indeed, four. Indeed, but as you see right there, right now the Inferno defense is playing on all cylinders. Gator making the beautiful read on that stop, then taking control, getting pumped out of the way of Ludwin because of Ludwin. And but Jalen getting control of the ball. They need to get some goals and fast. They are down 3-0 with a minute left to play. But Jordan go for the shot. Ludwin getting back on time with a beautiful save by Ludwin. Nice job there. But as I say that on the rebound, Ibo with the score all but sealing the game. Bad players are going to need four consecutive tip-off goals to win this one, in my opinion. But, oh, my goodness. But, he, but as I said before, Inferno needed to shut down JJ, and they are doing just that, whether it be with – some absolute physical play. They are demoing him. They are bumping him. They are reading him. They are taking him out of the game. And unfortunately, Ludwin and Jalen are unable to do it. But as I say, <laughs> JJ with a long cross court shot. Look at that on the intercept, getting it past both defenders who are getting ready for the offense. And at least bad players put a point on the board. Yeah, and now the score is four to one. There. A little aggressive there by Inferno. JJ with the arrow shot is definitely does get the clear. Um, but Inferno, I think honestly, with them winning this kickoff uh, and getting control of the ball right now, I think that does seal the game. And 18 seconds left, that's an open net miss. You do not see those from You Gator cannot miss that open net. But right now, with, with a 4 1 lead, I guess you can miss them. But <laughs> you probably when, can. If it was game, <laughs> that is a shot that you need to put home. But as we say that, we got five seconds left to play. Four, three, two, one, and. Game, set, match, Inferno taking your tournament victory. Congratulations, Inferno, for taking the three to one series win over bad players. And Inferno, like it was the prediction, they did take the revenge over bad players after their loss last week. Great a series from them. For me, I, I, Negator was the bottom of the, of the leaderboard in this game. But he's he's got to be the match MVP between his physical play and his demos. Uh, like last the in game three, he was the offensive MVP. He was there with uh, just an in a ton of pressure throughout the entire game. I think for me, Gator does end up being the uh, the finals MVP for this match. Uh I cannot decide between Ibo or Gator because Ibo's defensive interceptions were absolutely hmm. key, but Gator's Gator's physical play absolutely took JJ out of the equation. He yeah. did what he needed to do. And you know what? Overall, I will agree with you. G Gator does get does get my uh, finals MV does get the finals MVP cuz just from the physical play, from his presence, from the assists, from the shots, he, he was involved in almost every play whether directly or indirectly. Yeah. Certainly, but a great tournament win from Inferno. A bad players, they're never a team that is hard to beat. Uh, like, I mean, that was a great looking game. And wave, way, like, props to Inferno. I mean, it was close. It was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth throughout the entire first be beginning games into that. And then Inferno just they kept the pressure on. They kept the pedal to the metal. And a bad players unfortunately got put on their defensive back foot, couldn't keep up, and they it did end up falling. So Inferno is going to take our slips number 30 weekly number 32 tournament victory. And I'm pretty certain that is their fourth overall tournament victory as well. So congratulations to them. We had a, some amazing matches here, okay? I mean, indeed, I'm that, happy. It was a great we had, we had one hell of an upset with, with the uh, Dragons beating N7 Phantoms right mm. off the bat. But after, after that, it seemed that most of the matches went as we expected, at least in terms of picks. Just closer. But, uh, but however, every single match, every single series – we're very close. Yeah. It's like, a, even though the finals ended with a three to one Inferno win, every match was reasonably close. Like, like M22 
like both M22 teams put put both bad players and Inferno on their back feet. So I'm expecting big things of them in the future, no doubt. But between but Inferno's offense just absolutely clicked at the perfect time, especially yeah. in the finals when you wanted to click the most. And Inferno take taking taking the win, taking the tournament win, taking the finals win, taking the tournament win, facing off against some quality quality opponents in in some pretty strong defensive battles. Tough, and tough uh, as I as I think of it, who will be your tournament MVP? Oh jeez. That one's tough. I, I I may have to give that one to Ibo, aka Neb. I think that yeah. ultimately he had he he was very consistent among among the entire matches. Uh, Gator, even though he did come out and and put down a huge performance uh, in the fi- in the finals, and I, he does gain my MVP for that. I think that ultimately Ibo, aka Neb, was the one that was able to really be solid. Jordan as well, always solid play from him. But at the end of the day, you know, Neb, Neb and, and Gator really, really stepped up in this tournament. And I think Neb was just a little bit more consistent throughout the rest of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Gator definitely gets my finals MVP. But but Neb's presence throughout the entire tournament was something that you could definitely write home about. He, his presence basically gave his team the victory in the previous two matches mm-hmm. in the previous in the previous two matches that we saw. So, yeah, I, I will agree. Uh, Ibo, aka Neb, gets my ter- gets our t- overall tournament MVP. Though Gator does certainly get the finals MVP. Absolutely. Well, amazing tournament here. Congratulations <laughs> to Inferno and every other team that does that did compete. Thank you to everybody that was here. We had a great tournament for us k thank you to you for doing play-by-play man you need to get some water yeah. my friend because but also also as i'm as i'm thinking of it mm-hmm. i real and go going back to neb quickly uh i did say that 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 after he get after he caused that reset he better get the mvp and lo and behold he did <laughs> he did absolutely he got that new the the new server and that's all he needed <laughs> mm-hmm Indeed, indeed. Yeah, so, great uh, tournament here. Yeah. Thanks, K, for the play-by-play, man. You did awesome. Uh, appreciate it to GJ and Nas in the background. They're always absolutely killing it. Just, uh, like, com- super clean. Thank you to all, both of you guys for all of your hard work. Thank you to all the teams that competed. And we hope to see you guys next week in our weekly Slips Tournament number 33. We hope you all have a good night. See you later. Indeed. Indeed, I am K7, this is Wallaby Gangster. Have a great night.